paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's, it's an, an idea. idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. Hello everybody and welcome to yet another um, episode of Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. And um, we've also got Paul Roy and Katarina Roy on Skype. Say hi, guys. Hey, how's it going? Hey there. And um, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna be telling a big long story of the last twenty to twenty five days, give or take, whatever a month, whatever you want to call it. Things have just been, you know. Com completely nuts. Um, a lot of that has been good. There's been some contrast mixed in, of course, and um, on the screen share that I have open right now, there's the DeviantArt Journal, Where Did the Love Go?, which, which totally, totally ties into all of this. Um, but first, I need to do a little search for a particular clip out of a part of a video. Um, see, Rochelle de Young's pastor is really awesome and has his sermons online and all that good stuff. And there was just a short little part of the sermon, not from this last Sunday, because usually well, it, it takes him till about Thursday to actually get the, you know, get the videos out. <laughs> <clears throat> but from the Sunday previous, there is this just this little part of of the sermon that has total and complete relevance and is just completely and and absolutely just hilarious that um, you guys are all gonna love this. Um, for those that you know are not. Christian, don't worry, nothing's going to get preachy or whatever. There's just this one, you know, a little part that is just really, really funny and appropriate. Okay, and it looks like the the sermon for this last Sunday, they did, they did put it up. Um, it just turned Thursday in in my time zone. It's it's still Wednesday, Katarina and Paul, and I'm just waiting a moment for this page to finish loading so that the browser doesn't have a total heart attack and then conflict with all the other applications and stuff. Because um, the way this church does it is they just they just have all the sermons from the beginning of when they started posting them online, all embedded into one page. And if they're not fig figuring it out, by it will figure out that if you have way too many on one one page, it'll it'll literally you know make it so the browser is either runningly slow or crashes out completely. And you know then I think at that point they will start implementing sort of system. What's up, Katarina? I said you would make such a great salesperson. You're like you drone on about stuff that's kind of like tangential and it's kind of interesting and it breaks your state and then it just like I, I just noticed that in our entire six year friendship I have listened to you talk about stuff that is just like completely random 
but so interesting because you're talking about it from your life experience. And it, I don't know, it kind of was like pacifying and also I kind of passively listened to you. It's interesting. I am a great salesperson when I can be in an environment that I could do it, you know, in exactly the way that you said. Um, a lot of problems yeah. I had I had run into in the past is that a lot of a, a lot of sales positions for things um, they want you to do it in in certain universal um, verbatim ways that you know that completely go against a person's you know natural gifts that that there's no oh, way please. there's no way they can make they can make sales going by that and the companies don't realize that if they let the person flow with their their natural mojo that that company's profits would go up like you know big time but oh, these companies are run by arrogant asshats what's up so the job that Paul just got today, that's exactly the format that they're asking him to sell in. His own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I asked them how they wanted me to do it. And they're like, well, you got to be yourself. And if you can't be yourself, then you can't work here. I'm like, well, nice. good news. I've got 33 years of experience being myself. In fact, I forgot to put it on my resume, but I'm really, really good at that. <laughs> Yeah, and you can just sell fucking Picasso's and yourself. How yeah. cool is that? Right, and because I want to have one of them on my wall, it's really easy. That that's a part in the timeline of events here that we're going to be getting into a lot more um, detail with later because it's relevant and connecting with a lot of other things we're going yeah, to excited. discuss. But yeah, I was going to say I remember because like. Um, I'm a huge computer geek and I can build computers to all sorts of stuff. I'm a jack of many trades. And for a while I was in the business of, you know, physical computer repair and building and thing, things like this. And, um, you know, a while back, I, I got out of that. And I'll explain why I got out of that. Um, back in, in the day, um, client of mine by the name of Joseph Schuler's, it's amazing that he's even, even still, still in business. Um, you know, a nice guy generally, well intended. I'm not trying to shit talk him, but I'm, I've also got to tell the truth of, of my experiences. This guy thought that because he had a storefront in a in, in a mini mall with a with a parking lot, and that his business had been around since the Stone Age, that he just knows it all and he's he's right about everything. And you know, there's many stories about that I could tell, but the the one in particular is that this guy knew nothing about sales. He was good with jewelry. He was good at fixing watches. He was great with a lot of things, but sales was not one of them. And he would always complain that no matter what he did, sales were, were always down. And another thing that he would hate when I would do is talk to the customers. He, he's one of those people that thinks that being passionate and being yourself is rude and makes people uncomfortable and this and that and whatever. So I had to really observe the situation carefully when a customer was there and make sure I was like 99% sure that I could make a sale by opening my mouth and talking. So there were a few times that, that I did exactly that. And I told him, look, you were about to let those customers walk, walk out of the store without spending a dime. And because I did that thing you, you, you say you don't like me doing, opening my big fat fucking mouth, you got a sale right there. Had I not opened my big fat fucking mouth, you would have not have gotten a sale. And if you would let me open my big fat fucking mouth more often, your sales would probably go up. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, now that all of this has is loaded here, um, you know, the sermon before the last, it's called by the book money. Can I get a little help here? Let me hit the play button and, and let it buffer a little. And I'm going to try to find the exact um, section in the video um, where the pastor has a friend of his come up and and at the beginning, he, he, he tells a quick little story that is just so hilarious and so relevant. And I, I just want to I want to share this. I like their intro for this, by the way, the music. Listen to this. That's original music, by the way. I'm not going to get like copyright screwed by YouTube. 
because I remember them mentioning this that, to, that this was like the church band or something that did this or some band that they know. So this is all original shit. It's awesome. I'm totally going to fair you snag that music one of these days. Again, thanks for being here today. Hope you're being encouraged. Okay. This book we'll, has to say about it. I have to do the fast forwarding. Those to use well. With money. Bear and with me here. Notice he's got two chairs that out exist. there. That exist. For those watching the screen share thing. It's in there. Truth. Truth. But he chose to not be so he could be here with us. I'm there. Okay. Back a little. For this church. Back a little. Paul, come on up here, my friend. Paul and his sweet wife, Lynn, have been members of our church for a while now. And uh, they are amazing folks. And to be honest with you, Paul is probably the wisest person I've met when it comes to financial stewardship and and financial issues that are connected to faith. I'm excited for him to share some some thoughts and some some words with you. I think you both are seeing the relevance in this one too. Faith and finances. Gee, like that hasn't been a theme lately. Um, he's been trained in Crown Financial Ministries as well as in Financial Peace University. Both are Christian-based uh, financial stewardship groups. And so this man, not only from personal experience but professional training, he's met with lots of couples to deal with their stuff. I just want to sit at his feet for a while and learn. I think he's got some really practical, helpful, godly advice for us this morning. Sound okay? So if you don't like it, it's Paul's fault, basically. It's not mine this morning. Okay. Uh, hey, this morning, I am, I've just got to brag on this guy for a second because he has already sacrificed for this church. He is a diehard Chicago Cubs fan. And he was going to be at the game last night. He had an opportunity to be at the game last night, but he chose to not be so he could be here with us. Come on, tell me that's not faithfulness right there, right? I have a confession. Okay, all right. I did consider backing out. <laughs> and I called a good friend of mine, a fellow Cubs fan, and I said, do you think watching the Cubs go to the World Series for the first time in 71 years, first time in our lifetime, is worth it to break a commitment to the church and risk burning in hell forever? <laughs> wow. What did he say? And his response was, if they win, you're covered because hell's going to freeze over. Oh, yeah, yeah. But if they lose, you've got a problem. Yeah, you're done. So yeah. like every skeptical Cub fan, here, <laughs> here, right? here yeah, I am. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, we'll take you anyway we can get you, buddy. Yeah. And then, you know, um, earlier um, Wednesday morning, again, um, you know, it, it only just turned thir Thursday for my time zone. Um, and for some of the, those watching, if, if you don't understand the, the terminology I'm about to use here, that's okay. Just notice the, uh, the, the, the synchronicity and coincidence. I said massive collective shift yesterday. I could feel it. Then a few hours ago, Rochelle signed on the DeviantArt and got hit with all of the love and praise bombs she's received. Ha, ha, ha. She didn't reply to anyone yet. Today is going to be a, a day of a hashtag triggered for her, and I'm sure the synchronicity of her day will be intense. Katerina responded with, ha, 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 yes, yes, ye yesterday and the day before were big, and Paul got the job. And then what, what happens to, um, you know, within the same period of 24 hours and the cubs also won the world series and you know oh, i don't i don't keep track of the sports stuff at all but when i heard the air of the city being filled with fourth of july fireworks i'm like oh man <laughs> That can only mean one thing, and the timing of it, too. And I also want to point out the next synchronicity in this. Remember Back to the Future Part 2 when Marty McFly went there and he got the sports almanac and all that? Well, yeah. I, I'm about to show everybody here that um, Marty, um, and I, I'm, I'm going to... Um, 
make this you know this video window slightly smaller and adjust the volume to reduce risk of like any copyright flagging or whatever but marty was only off by one year check this out hey kid i'm 100 bucks will you help save the clock power Sorry, no. Come on, kid. That's an important historical landmark. Some other time. Lightning struck that thing sixty years ago. Wait a minute. Cubs win World Series against Miami. Yeah, something, huh? Who would have thought? Hundreds to one shot. I wish I could go back to the beginning of the season. Put some money on the Cubs. I just meant Miami. What did you just say? I said I wish I could go back to the beginning of the season. Put some money on the Cubby. So in Back to the Future Part 2, they they predicted that um, the Cubs would, would win the World Series in October of 2015. But instead, they win the World Series in the, the very, very beginning of November 2016. So Marty was only off by like a year and a few weeks. Yeah, right. How's that for some freaking synchronicity, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, for something like that, where where the the Cubs have a a now ended one hundred and eight year record of losing, 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 and being really, really uh, pro prolifically skilled at losing. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, what are the chances that? this would happen in alignment with like everything else that's going on. And I mean, the stuff in my personal life and your personal lives, it's just, it's all a part of the, um, you know, of the fractal. I'm not trying to be egocentric and act like the universe revolves around me or some shit. You know, if people pay attention and, and, you know, um, stop, you know, for a moment to, you know, put the pause button on hunting Pokemon or playing Angry Birds and actually, actually look around at their life around them and engage their, their brain and then take a look at world events and, and everything else. They, they might see the interconnectedness of things, you know, they might, they might see what, what things have to do with what other things, because everything is interconnected like, like a Swiss watch, you know. Uh, it's it's ridiculous that people are always trying to look for the one absolute extreme singular cause of anything. You know, like, oh, what causes cancer? It's like cancer is is a, a, a symptom of a pattern in operation. It's like if people would only look for patterns, they'd understand that if they if they can recognize patterns and learn about patterns, that if that if they want to change or end a pattern, they just have to figure out how to disrupt that pattern. It's not about singular causes. It's not like, oh, you know, go go back in time and give Obama's father a condom and you save the world. It's not as simple as that. <laughs> but people always act like it's that simple like oh which ingredient do we want to blame for the cake right or you know what's the marital status of the number five but we're, we're taught to operate on that level of ridiculousness and and we're not taught to look for patterns even einstein's theory of of relativity has been cracked by a modern day physicist that was always a big thing you know cracking that and understanding that and the logical fallacy was that everybody was always on the lookout for a fundamental particle. Ooh, if we could find that that particle that it's it, that's right there at the bottom of the scale where everything begins, then we can understand life, the universe, and everything. And it's 42. No, um, Nassim Harriman figured out that it's a fundamental pattern, not a fundamental particle. And, you know, there's lectures you can YouTube on that, and he's got the little blackboard up there, whatever, and he'll take you through all the boring brain pain math of it you know to prove that he's he's not just you know wanky shit demoning a bunch of you know blah 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 that he that he actually has has cracked it but the point in my mentioning it or people are always always looking for that that particle or that singular root cause of something and that that doesn't exist because everything's connected together like a fucking swiss watch we have to look for patterns, not particles, not causes, you know, and we have to, we have to realize that the cough is not the cold.
you know we all we you know oh yeah let's let's uh do the disease management and symptom management i mean hey why look for cures when we could do that oh it's the cough that's to blame no the cough is is a symptom it's it's the cold that's the root and if you want to understand why colds happen you have to look at the interconnected patterns that bring that about because, you know, the web of, of life, the web of reality is not as simple. It's just, oh, there's that one thing over there that causes everything. So we'll just take care of that one thing and fix the world. Sorry, not that simple. Any thoughts on that, guys? Oh, I've definitely noticed in my life um, that... Hmm. I kind of like go with, uh, I'm getting weird echo for just a second. Yeah, that's, there we go. Okay, that can sometimes happen. That can sometimes happen. Yeah, so, um, so anyway, I've noticed that whenever we're focusing on something over here, that uh, we, we tend to see a lot of it. For example, Katharina and I have been considering like what sort of a, what sort of vehicle we want now that we live in Maui. And she's kind of narrowed it down to a couple of different white convertibles. If she wants a white convertible. And so she was looking at the, the newer white Mustangs and the, the white Porsche Cayenne, uh, what is it, the Porsche Boxster. And then we're seeing them everywhere because when you look for it, you see a pattern that's there. And I don't think that, um, I don't think that that uh, everything can be brought down to a single like a single symptom or, or one single cause or like, I've noticed that that over time things tend to go less organized instead of more organized and so if you're if you're looking for a you're looking for a root cause of everything chaos to order like like the elites are partially right they're operating on a misunderstanding but they're partially right <laughs> mm -hmm. right yeah so essentially that yeah yeah totally i mean i i think i think that's also a logical fallacy that the new age movement comes into as well they think it's as simple as oh you know um ask believe and receive you know as if you know they the universe is like a quantum like shopping mall or something and you know they just go up to the aisle and and they, they pick out what they want and go to the checkout counter and you know god or source or whatever is at the checkout counter and you know they they they, they whip out they whip out their little credit card that's got the secret logo on it and slide it through the machine and you know they can just get whatever they want um they're not realizing that people have to take responsibility their ability to respond and things happen in, in in patterns and in fractals it's not like quantum santa claus is going to jump down their their chimney because they they placed an, an order on you know um amazon manifestation dot wtf you know um so they have like this this weird m m weird materialistic view of it that is just as narrowed down as most as the way most of these corporations think and the way we're we're taught to view things they don't connect dots they don't they don't look at patterns you know just like if you just if people would just look up and look at the world around them you know you see the way all the trees are growing and the way the wind is blowing and just the way everything is interconnected it's it, it's a pattern no one's looking for the the singular cause of all birds chirping as if there's only one thing that like makes all birds chirp or something but you know when it comes to you know the idea of manifesting what you want it's it's really about making yourself compatible with with the patterns that are already in operation so when when you don't look around and pay attention it's like driving with a blindfold on so of course you're going to crash into stuff and it it doesn't matter that you know how to drive and both your hands are on the wheel and and you know whatever else if you're driving with a blindfold on you're going to crash into stuff it's like oh i didn't manifest what i want or or you know i i got the car but now it left my reality it's like you crashed it into a tree okay because you had a blindfold on while you were driving because you're a fucking idiot <laughs> you know oh 
Well, yeah, we still have to take responsibility for our actions. I mean, when it, when it comes to manifesting, it, it's important both to be very specific about what you want, but then also to follow through with, it, with the action towards the thing, that whatever, whatever it is you want, because it doesn't just happen because you write it down in a journal a hundred times a day. It happens because you actually want the fucking thing. Yeah. It's the same attitude of all these, like, you know, these entitled social justice warrior people and their little safe spaces and all that. Like they think the world owes them everything and they should be able to, to, to stand there and stomp their feet and say, mine, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme. And, you know, totally having the attitude of like the welfare state you know, the totalitarian welfare state. It's like a lot of these new agey people have, you know, a similar outlook when it, when it comes to the quantum physics of things there, they're like, they're almost like social justice warriors in and of their own right. Although instead of stamping their feet and demanding to, you know, the people of the world or a government or, or whatever, they're like stamping their feet before God saying, gimme, 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 mine, 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 now, now, now. And it doesn't work that mm -hmm. way. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll relay to you a story that I think is, is very interesting and relevant to this topic. Um, Katharina and I went to go look at a castle, and um, we uh, the, the castle turned out to be kind of underwhelming, but the, the realtor came over to pre-qualify us to see if we were qualified to purchase this particular castle that we were looking at. And uh, he said, so are you looking to rent or buy? And I said, well, we're looking to establish a desire. We're looking to see if we actually want to own this thing. Because then he said, well, how much do you want to pay? And I said, whatever the thing that I want costs, that's what I want to pay. And whatever amount of money is necessary to get the thing that I want always shows up in my world because if I want it hard enough, I take the action steps toward it. Not because of magic, but because I take the, I take the, the regular and inspired action steps towards this thing that I want. I I wanted a, a job that paid four times what I was making at my previous job. So I took the inspired action steps. In three weeks, I put out one resume. Boom, and I got the job. Yeah, because so, you made yourself compatible with a pattern that's already in operation because mm -hmm. you, you understand how to recognize patterns where a lot of people you know they 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 think that it's like oh like santa claus they they create a vision board or whatever and that they can sit there and be a little quantum social justice warrior and stamp their feet and go okay god gimme 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 universe gimme 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 and then they get like all butthurt and disappointed when it doesn't quite work that way and they're like this stuff doesn't work or or i'm just not good at this or blah 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 and it's like no, it's not any of that. It's just that you're being an, an entitled, whiny little bitch and you need to pull the pole out of your ass and realize that, you know, the world doesn't fucking revolve around you and that you might want to, like, look up from the ground and look around and start connecting dots and paying attention to patterns that are all around you and then take responsibility for your own actions instead of sitting there thinking that everybody's got to cattle to you and, and coddle you and, and, you know, kiss your butt, you know, get, get out of that, nar that narcissism and actually be willing to take responsibility and to be able to own your thoughts, own your emotions, own your actions and do what you need to do. But there's so many people that do not want to do that, you know, within organized religion people would rather hide from life by sticking their nose in a book such as the bible and the bible's all well and great it's it's knowledge there's a lot of good stuff in there as a matter of fact um general Patton gives credit to most of his victories during world war ii because he looked um to the bible for insight for military strategy and um, those strategies worked and saved his ass and helped him win. So the Bible is just a tool like anything else. But a lot of Christians are not looking around at, at the patterns around them of, of their life. And they think that they can just stick their nose in this book and that God is going to, you know, coddle them like a three-year-old and just take care of everything for them around them and that they'll be okay as long as they hide from themselves and hide from the world by sticking their nose into this book 
24 7 and that doesn't work and and they're constantly disappointed like oh i've got all this faith in in god i read the bible all the time and this and that and so on so why do i still feel miserable uh, and and why are certain things in my life not working out the way i want them to i've prayed and i've prayed and i've prayed and it's like no you haven't prayed you've whined and it's like dear god I'm, my belief system is that my life is crap, and I'm unwilling to change that belief system, which totally cripples me from taking any personal responsibility or taking any action steps. So, God, I'm just so miserable, and I refuse to do anything. So, if, if you're feeling in a really good mood to put up with my whiny, bitchy, self-centered, arrogant fucking self that I am affirming and choosing to not deviate from, and I refuse to take myself out of this mindset to actually do anything for myself if you're in a mood enough to tolerate my stupid rigid stubborn ass maybe you could do my job for me just a little bit please if you would and then god says nope here's the tools to do it for yourself and then those people curse god what the fuck or they curse themselves like i, I guess I'm, i i must not have whined hard enough to win god's favor let me try whining a little harder a little louder let me really try affirming what a piece of crap i am and how much my life sucks and blah 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 maybe i just wasn't whining loud enough and i look at these people and it's like wow mm -hmm. yeah I can, hey, um, something I can, that Katharina and I do because I, I can imagine we both it. read the Bible and pray very regularly, like every day, all the time. Mm -hmm. all, all, yeah, pretty much like my entire life is a prayer, but it's not the type of prayer that most people think of when they think of, hey, dear Jesus, I need this and that and the other thing, and you know, deliver me cosmic Walmart. Because what it is, it's like a, it's like a consistent acknowledgement of the higher power and a consistent state of gratitude complete total gratitude for, for everything that is happening because and really what this is it's just a shifting of my own state into into loving what is and to being like hey the thing that's happening to me is actually the best thing that could possibly happen to me my life rock even when the thing that is happening isn't what i think or what the way that i thought it would happen yeah I was going to say, and I could picture God doing a cosmic face palm. <laughs> Looking at these whiny people, just like, oh, geez, here we go with this again. Right. I mean, think about <laughs> think about the way that the Bible describes the, the relationship between man and God as your God's child. And and look at it. I mean, because it's not like, look at the pattern. You have the, you have the pattern of the child comes out of mommy, and then mommy and daddy raise the child. And what child gets what they want, it's the one that loves mommy and daddy, not the one that whines and bitches about how everything is wrong all the time. Not to mention... That's the child that gets what the child wants. That's the child that has the great life. And the child... The that just loves mommy and daddy. The child is excited to eventually grow into an, an adult. Whereas mm -hmm. when it comes to our own spirituality or when it comes to our addiction to dependence on government through our worship of authority, you know, adulthood instead of becoming adulthood becomes a state of extended adolescence. We want to forever and ever whine to God, whine to government, whine to this, whine to that. I mean, it's all well and good to point out that, yes, we, you know, the world's run by psychopathic scumbags and, and they've done this, that, and whatever, but that's not a blame. That's just a symptom of a problem, you know? And when you really look at the the pattern of the source of the problem it's because we the people in our complacency have allowed psychopaths to take power because what are we doing whining like little entitled bitches oh i'm not willing to do anything for myself or think for myself or be thankful for anything i want a politician to fix my life for me i want a politician to fix my world for me do everything for me and if they don't then naughty 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 on them it's their fault wah 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 and it is that attitude that allows psychopaths and scumbags to allow organized crime to run the world that's that's on us and people will argue oh but you know 
they created these mind control means to lock us in so that we're, we're unaware and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, well, that was then and this is now because we're in a major awakening process now. And anybody who pays even five minutes of attention to world events, you know, can see that, you know, the genie's out of the bottle, the cat's out of the bag. In the age of information, ignorance is a choice. That absolutely is. Yeah. And ignorance doesn't mean not knowing, by the way. Hyphenate the word ignore ants. It is to willfully ignore, like, oh, that piece of information might hurt my butt. I might have to face myself. I might have to, to rethink, you know, what I, my view of reality. I might have to acknowledge that there might be some, some people, things, establishments or whatever that I put my faith in that might have betrayed me. And then I have to process those emotions of betrayal, which is really freaking uncomfortable. So rather than do that, I'm going to say, no, no, I'm staying in my emotional bubble wrap. I'm not going to look at anything. Hil Hil Hillary's wonderful and Trump is God and government and corporations can do no wrong because they're protected from evil and corruption by a magic force field powered by unicorns because God God put that there because I say so for no reason. So there. And if you try to tell me otherwise, I'm going to, to close my eyes and cover my ears and hum. La, 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 la. You're an idiot. And I'm an intellectual genius. La, 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 la. Shut up. La, 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 la. So that's what a lot of people are trapped in right now. So it's not that the information isn't there. So when anybody told me, but but uh, but I was born into this system. I didn't make this. The elites were here for long before I was. The scumbaggery has been going on for a long time. It's like that may be true, but we're in we're in the age of information now. So ignorance is a choice. Sorry to break it to you. I, I would never have chosen this. Yeah, and choice is a bridge. If you're on the bridge, you're on the bridge. It doesn't matter if you were tricked on it to go choosing to go on the bridge. If you know, if you were kidnapped and put in the trunk of a car and then let out on the bridge, it doesn't matter how you got to the bridge. If you're on the bridge, you're on the bridge. And choice is a bridge. And if you've made a choice, it doesn't matter if it was unconsciously, subconsciously, or consciously, whether you made it within full recognition of what's going on or whether, you know, you were made a fool of and a sucker. It doesn't matter. You still made the choice in either case. And that level of personal responsibility is something that needs to be learned. Yeah. And, uh, same way that a child becomes an adult, and as you become an adult, you start taking more and more personal responsibility. Like, first you start brushing your teeth and wiping up your ass, and then you start driving your car and not crashing it into things, and start paying your rent and stuff like that. And, uh, and mentally and emotionally, it's the same exact way. Eventually, you have to continue, you have to take charge of, of the way that you feel, take charge of the things that you think, and take charge of your own level of, of empowerment and lack of ignorance about things that are important to you. You can't change what you Instead know. Instead of just blaming them on, oh, well, the people who came before me did this. Well, yes, and that just means that you can change it now if you choose. Or you can ignore it and bitch about it for the whole rest of your life mm -hmm. if you choose. Either way, you're choosing. You can't, you can't change what you don't own. So if you, mm -hmm. don't, if you don't own your thoughts, if you don't own your emotions if you don't own your choices if you don't own all of that then if you always do what you've always done you're always going to get what you've always gotten it's not rocket science it's pretty simple straightforward really yeah. i but, found that in my life i've been able to essentially do what my peers would consider to be quantum leap in the material realm that I, that I find to be actually moderately unimportant because I just sort of have whatever I want, whenever I want. And um, the reason is simply because I'm willing to destroy my belief system completely and rebuild it with better and newer information. It takes and, practice, so though, better. right? It takes practice, though, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and I practice it very actively. People are people judge practice as bad because they they've been taught to have such low self esteem and taught to think that making mistakes makes them dirty and evil and bad and, and wrong and, and weak. And they have to get it perfect the first time. Otherwise terrible them naughty on them. Even though Einstein said, anybody who's never made a mistake has never tried anything new. 
but people, but you know, within practice, you know, you're, you're, you're going to make mistakes and learn from them when, when you practice, that's just a part of how it works. But people judge the idea of making mistakes as being so horrible. Like, Oh my God, if I make a mistake, I'm a dirty, rotten, horrible person and life is over and I fail at life and there's no, no recovering from that. And people have just gotten really, really neurotic in their delusional perfectionism and protocol happy worship of authority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the fact is that the master has failed more times than the neophyte has been tried. I mean, I have failed and failed and failed in life. That's why I get to live on Maui. That's why I get to, to have the life that I want because of all the times that I have failed so miserably. All the times that I have and I have like, yeah, I lived in a goat shack, Katharina likes to remind me. There was a time in my life when I lived in a goat shack on top of a mountain, and I only saw somebody every two weeks, and I was talking to dogs and shit because I was so bored. And, um, you know, when people finally came up to visit me, they were hippies, and they did a shower, and they just make a qigong around me. And honestly, I'm not going to say that that was the highlight of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but but I will say that it is that experience that allowed me to shift the preference of not having the naked Mexican hippie doing qigong in my general vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> A preference that I otherwise would not have created. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. Also, words like should, shouldn't, and trying are totally loaded words because like trying is a is a setup to fail whereas words like practicing implies that you are in a constant state of improvement yeah you'll make mistakes but you know winners fail until they succeed losers give up um <laughs> you know so it's you know trying the word trying when we say oh i tried and i tried Trying is an excuse. When when people use the word trying, ever no, notice that they use it not in the context of, oh, yeah, I'm going to keep trying until I make it. They use it in the context of, well, I should stop now. I should give up because, you know, I tried and I tried and I tried and I'm just a pathetic loser and I keep proving that to myself. So, so I'm just going to give up now. That's the context of trying. Whereas okay. practicing is a totally different thing. And as Yoda said, try not, do or do not. There is no try. There is no try. Yeah, yeah the, the, the words that people use are very, very powerful. The, um, I have been very, I've been very intentional about removing words like can't from my vocabulary, simply because I do not choose to live in a reality where there's anything that I can't do. I can, I simply persist long enough until I do, whatever it may be. And I've noticed that I've noticed that at least in my life, a lot of the a lot of my really big dreams have come true because I'm a persistent, persistent man. Yeah. And I just I, I I just continue to to go at it at different angles of attack until I find the one that works. I just want to clarify something for the viewers slash listeners, because I, I know some people are going to look at that and say, oh, 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 no such thing as can't. Well, that person is talking with themselves into a delusion. Um, yes, there is such a thing as can't. Like, you, you know, you're not going to sit there thinking, well, I can definitely sprout wings and fly right now just for no reason because unicorns. Um, Paul's not using it in that delusional sense. Of course, there is such a thing as can't, and everything that falls under can't usually doesn't matter anyway. Okay, so Paul can't sprout wings and fly right now just because he wills it to, but is there a need to sprout wings and fly? Not really. So everything that yeah. falls under can't, there is no immediate need for. Yeah, and the, the things that, um, you know, I, I'm not a delusional person who, who thinks that there's any need whatsoever to sprout wings and fly. I have soloed an airplane, so I have flown all by my lonesome by persisting at messing up landing an airplane and scaring the crap out of my flight instructor for long <laughs> enough until I didn't scare him enough that he handed me the controls. 
<laughs> so if I want to fly, I can fly. There are many ways of flying. How do you want to fly? Yeah. But at this so, point, um, but at this point, spontaneously sprouting wings is not one of them, and you're not trying to say that it is. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. There's definitely a, yeah, ca I'm not a chance that, exists. Believe that I am a magical unicorn beast. I, I just truly am not one of those. <laughs> yeah. But within the realm of of the human experience, the far as <laughs> I've experienced it in my life, and and what I have seen other people are capable of doing. Because I just take my cues from the people around me, and I just I just look for the people who are doing the thing that I want to do, and I say, oh, well, if that person did it, that is proof that it can be done. I simply need to figure out the thing that they figured out, either by talking to them, because you know a lot of people, especially successful ones, are totally willing to share the secret to their success, but it's not really a secret. Yeah. Then of course, or there, there's going there's going to be the people that say, well, wait a minute. According to quantum physics, everything that can happen does. So it literally is possible to, to sprout wings spontaneously through sheer willpower and this and that. And my response to them is as true as that may be on, on the quantum level, you have to take into effect where you are now. Like it is true that a baby will one day you know, grow up and become old enough and, and, and wise enough to be able to get into a vehicle or an airplane in your case and learn how to, you know, how to, how to drive that. But to expect that baby to be able to get into that car right there. Okay. Six months old baby. All right, go drive baby. No, not going to happen. Not going to happen mm -hmm. at all. So right now, the human race as it stands, for the most part, if there are any exceptions, I don't know about them. I can't point to them. I can't say they do or don't exist. But for 99.999% of the human race in our current point of evolution, we are at that six-month-old baby stage when it comes to stuff like that. And if, if having the willpower to alter reality to suddenly you know, sprout wings and fly on that quantum level is the equivalent of the ability to drive the car, we are still the six-month-old baby in that analogy. So no matter how hard you think and intend and, and whatever – at this current point right now, ain't going to happen. That doesn't mean that humanity won't advance to the point to have that full willful control over, over the matter around it. Hell, might, might even be in our lifetime. We're in an accelerated rate of change. But as it stands right in this here and this now, we are the six-month-old baby that is not going to just suddenly manipulate all matter around us with our will for no reason because unicorns, if we are going to learn how to do that, it's going to be a process of learning it's probably going to take a hell of a lot of time so it doesn't matter how much faith you have or or how much you know about quantum physics or whatever you know to think that the six-month-old baby is going to drive the car is pure fucking delusion <laughs> it is we're dealing with time horizons here and uh and, and i tend to think well i am going to live x amount of, of years and kind of be experiencing life on in this particular plane of reality for X number of years until I transcend it and do whatever the hell happens after you die. And uh, so I just look at the stuff that people, other human beings, accomplish. And I'm like, eh, I, I pick that one. I don't pick this one. I pick, I, you know, I, I, I pick the moving to Hawaii. I don't pick the injecting heroin into my arm. I feel like moving to Hawaii was a better choice. Or me, personally, even if you, even if you, even if you do manage to figure out immortality, that just means that then you will have the time to learn a whole bunch of other things that might not be able to be learned within a hundred year span. Going back to the point that it still takes time to learn things, regardless of what it is you're talking about. It still takes time. And people who think that they can skip the learning process are kind of operating under a delusion. Absolutely. And even people who are naturally talented or get some form of divine insight in order to rapidly accelerate the learning process still have to figure out how to get said divine insight. So even if you're pulling your energy from a place that is not of this world, you still have to figure out how to do it. Yep. It's still a learning process. And for as long as you judge the process of learning as bad and horrible and terrible, 
it, you know, you're going to be in a hamster wheel in a big hurry to get nowhere fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, you, you have to be willing to suck. And if you're not willing to suck, then you're not willing to be successful at anything. <clears throat> Sucking at something at the price of success. Yep. I'm sucking on a tobacco pipe, but that's completely unrelated. <laughs> but there was a point in your life where your lungs were still virgin and where sucking on the tobacco pipe in the way in the manner in which you currently do it was completely outside of your ability to accomplish. Yeah. <laughs> and also this uh, being able to smoke natural tobacco out of a, t a tobacco pipe is definitely an upgrade from a while back when I would smoke mainstream cigarettes that are coated with like, you know, a thousand other different added poisons. And I was, you know, smoking like two packs a day at, at a high point and, you know, both monetarily and health wise, it's like, all right. If I'm not ready to stop smoking, if I can't figure that out, I at least need to figure out a way to greatly, drastically reduce my intake. Otherwise, I'm going to end up in a nice little wooden box six feet under, and I don't want to go that route. So I don't smoke. And once anyway. again, it's a choice. It's not because you didn't look at it from the point of view of, oh, I have to kick this habit because I'm a bad human being who smokes and I'm a dirty, dirty, rotten person. But instead you said, how about I figure out a way to continue to receive the benefit that I enjoy about smoking? Because you don't smoke because you're stupid. You smoke because it gives you a benefit that you like. People engage in habits because the habits are beneficial to them. But rather you said, how about if I can, how about if I improve my understanding of this particular habit that I've developed to the point where I can continue to receive the same benefit, but also kind of minimize and or get rid of these other parts of the habit that I don't prefer. Yeah, to where, you know, I can be out for half a day to a day and maybe I might I might want a little bit of a tobacco boost, but it's not something I have to have. Whereas like, you know, in the back in the two packs a day days, I, I needed a, you know, a cigarette like once every half hour to an hour. Otherwise, I'd be just like fiending and going crazy. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I had to figure out how to reduce and it really wasn't so much the tobacco itself that was putting me in that state, but all the added poisons, toxins and chemicals and stuff that they add to mainstream cigarettes for, so that they burn faster, so that they're more highly addictive, so that, you know, people are buying more, you know, corporate scumbaggery there for you. Whereas if you buy a little pouch of natural tobacco and you just smoke it out of a pipe, like... I go through one, uh, on average, one of those little pouches every two weeks or so, and, you know, I can go out and do something for the day completely away from my pipe, you know, no tobacco at all. And, yeah, when I get back home, I am really wanting a tug off of that. But I'm not spending the day like, oh, my God, if I don't have a puff of tobacco right now, my head is going to implode and I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Time to get to that point and time yes, of learning how to learning how to do it. Yep. I, I recall an instance when I was up and um, one of the one of the hippies, this, this one <coughs> kept his clothes on, but he was he actually brought a big pile of his own homegrown tobacco with him. And I just sat up on top of the mountain with him and smoked tobacco and, and really enjoy it. And I had never really I'd never enjoyed tobacco before because my first experience was with a cigarette. I was like, good Lord, this is nasty. But then when he, when he showed me the benefits of, of, of smoking a you know, tobacco that he literally grew himself, dried himself, and then you know, brought down to Costa Rica because that was where he was, <coughs> um, it showed me, it really helped me to understand why it is people smoke tobacco. And I, I came to understand it. And I was like, oh, there's a real there's a real benefit here. It is very enjoyable to watch the Costa Rican sunset while you're sitting on top of a mountain smoking this, this incredible tobacco that I never received when I was just puffing on, a, puffing on a cigarette and looking at the bathroom wall because I was trying to hide the fact that I was smoking from my mom. 
Exactly. And a lot of, a lot of times, um, addiction forms as a result of psychological overcompensation, like, um, you know, the uh, globalist elites or whatever you, you want to call them, they're, they're some of the most terrified, insecure, immature, repressed people on the planet. It gives them a major inferiority complex, which is then um, overcompensated by a super huge superiority complex, which gives them an addiction similar to gambling to where no matter how much they have, nothing is enough. And they feel that they need to control everyone and everything around them in order to feel safe in their own reality. Yet no matter how much they do, they still feel miserable. Look at most politicians. Look at Hillary. Look at, o look at Obama. Look at Henry Kissinger. I mean, look at all these different people. You could tell on their face. Like, they, they have, like, this rapid advanced aging thing now, especially in these energies and these times. But it's like, you could tell that these are miserable people. These are not happy people living happy lives. These are miserable, terrified people with low self-esteem, lower than most people can fathom existing within. And the Hillary Foundation, Hillary Clinton, whatever foundation, makes tons and tons of money. Hillary's loaded. Bill's loaded. Henry Kissinger's rich. Dick Cheney, Halliburton, more money than God. I mean, look at these people. They are they 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 have ultimate control of what they have ultimate control of. They could screw anybody over they want, kill anybody that they want, make money hand over fist. And what has it all really gotten them in the end? Nothing absolutely nothing they are miserable worthless pathetic examples of human garbage and all of their efforts have been for naught they are still miserable worthless pieces of shit greater than anybody can fathom because most people cannot fathom what it is like to be in that level of 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 worthlessness most most people's minds cannot go there. They cannot go into the psychopathic mindset because most people are not psychopaths. So they have a hard time understanding what it's like to 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 view the world from from the paradigms of, of these people and that level of misery and, and depravity and self-loathing, you know, extrovertedly projected as a loathing of everything and everyone else around them. Most people cannot imagine it to that level. Well, yeah, I mean, because when you don't actually do all the internal work necessary to, to just like shift your shift your own perspectives around, whatever it is that you want ends up just owning the hell of you, and it, it simply magnifies what's already there. It's just a magnifier. Money's a magnifier. Fame's a magnifier. Power's a magnifier. I I truly pity people who get that stuff when they're not ready for it because it's a curse. Oh yeah. Yeah, victory tastes like ashes. Yeah. And that's really what drives them to do something like that. I mean, if you look at our current crop of presidential candidates and you ask yourself, like, what is it? What, why, why don't we, why can't we come up with a better, you know, example of humanity to represent that particular office? And the answer is because no, no self-respecting member of humanity would desire it. Exactly. I mean, governmental break down the word govern and mental you know control mind mind control we need systems of infrastructure not systems of mind control and the best infrastructure in the world can only be maintained by a well-educated population that has very high self-esteem and right now our educational system is an indoctrination system not an educational system and low self-esteem is epidemic in this world right now so it, it doesn't really matter if someone could create the ultimate perfect system that would that would work absolutely flawlessly uh, you know, um, a society of fools is going to break such a system and burn it to the ground in five seconds because they are not emotionally or in any other way mature enough to be able to operate that system. Like, you know, a little kid trying to drive a car. You could have the world's best, most perfect, most safest, most, most awesome car, and a little kid is not going to be able to drive it. Yeah, I found that, um, you know, throughout history, 
you have you have government who it, it, it is in the best interest of government to have a populace that's easy to govern, mm -hmm. which means that government essentially dumbs down the populace and in their own self interest. It, it's easier to govern the dumb. But then what they end up with is a dumb populace, and well, then well, you're you're the king of the idiot, and so. Yeah. And then it becomes becomes like a bunch of dumb animals. Control becomes a lack of just control. On, it just keeps on turning. Yeah. And you, you get a new crop of like kind of like slightly smarter people, and then they're the new government. They they are the new the new crop of people who are able to lead the, the this this new um I guess a, a new paradigm if you want to describe it that way, but um. Same, it's, the, the it's same thing in different all. ways. When, when you enter into a, a social agreement where you are intentionally dumbing down all the people around you, you keep the world mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because, because idiots are only easy to control at first. Eventually, they, be, they become like a pack of, of you know, ravenous wolves. Um, and, and eventually, it goes from control to just everybody tearing everybody up. Right, and then you eventually have other people who understand how to control the ravenous wolves, and and um, there's there's a uh, there's a book called uh, the I believe it's the, the Pathway to Tyranny or the I think the Pathway to Tyranny, but it just it describes the process of how 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 you get autocratic leaders, and mm -hmm. it happens because you need somebody really strong to control the the, the maddened crowds and. I've never heard the term oculi used in the positive connotation. Yeah, there's there, there's no such thing as a positive end result from being a control freak. And ironically, the the control freak themselves gets the worst of it. Oh, the problem with progressive ideology is that it progresses. And then progressives eat their own. Because... Mm -hmm. If you if you have created your entire your entire <coughs> ideology based on progressing and and continuing with new thought patterns, whether or not those thought patterns are actually good, then your children eventually end up hating your gut because of course, well, they have to, otherwise they're not progressive. Uh -huh. And I I just I, I've seen this politically. Um, Somebody, somebody once told me, they said that liberals want to be liberal with the things that conservatives conserve. <laughs> and uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's very interesting because as I've, as I've kind of like looked at that particular dichotomy, it's, um, I, I've, I've, just, I've just seen that over the course of time, it, it just eventually devolves and the, the um, you know, say, say hello to the new boss, same as the old boss. Yeah. The, the, the new boss puts the old boss up against the wall mm -hmm. in the name of being progressive. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily because the old boss had bad ideas, but because the old boss had different ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And, and, you know, just like, um, you know, there's... Um, the phenomenon of you know the crystal kids and when people put crystal kids on on a pedestal the crystal kid becomes an apathetic pissy social justice warrior and what people don't understand about crystal kids it's like a, a crystal kid is like a new advanced highly superior computer and with a newly advanced highly superior computer if you run bad data through a superior computer it's going to break harder and faster than the old in, in inferior computer could have <laughs> because the the right. old, the older model of computer took longer to break because it wasn't able to process all of this bad, nasty data quickly enough. And plus, there was a limit to the, the level of nastiness of the data that that computer was even capable of processing. But now you've got a computer that can process like the most nastiest data ever at like breakneck speed. So, of course, that computer is going to fall faster than Rome, so to speak, metaphorically speaking. So when we put, you know, these crystal kids on a pedestal, it's just like, 
you know, what they are able to accelerate is not biased towards the positive or the negative, you know. If you put really good data in a really powerful computer, it's going to, you know, pro efficiently process the good and, you know, the same with the bad, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not biased. That's, that's what people right. got to realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you want to take that analogy further to say the human being is like a, a new, com you know, a new computer then it, it is important as the older generation to make sure that you put the best and brightest amount or you know type of data in the thing that you know to work really really well because they're just going to amplify it mm -hmm. and so that's why it's so important to walk around building people up build them up build them up because otherwise they are going to process the the, the old paradigms faster and harder and crash even worse and just really destroy everything around them in, in a more in a more uh, violent way. Exactly. I'm seeing as within this discussion, I do need to progress down the timeline that I'm I'm intending to go down here. Um, this brings me right to the, the the journal I did on deviant art, a little rant called "Where Did the Love Go." and um talks about exactly the sort of thing we're discussing here there's a picture at the mm -hmm. top that says you are here to bring light to the darkness you are not here to run away from the darkness you are not here to judge the darkness you are not here to pretend that political correctness brings light to anything bring compassion mm -hmm. bring compassion and understanding to all the dark places where there is suffering this is your task should you choose to accept it and that is a quote by me um that was me kind of venting off as is this entire journal one thing i've always loved about the deviant art community is the profound willingness to spread love and support around like free candy everyone has always been so excited and motivated to render positive feedback when someone is depressed the love pours out when someone needs encouragement about their art the love pours out the genuine love and support not the fake, oh, don't worry, things will get better, false sense of hope bullshit, but the honest, heartfelt, authentically expressed kindness, compassion, and empathy. Lately, <clears throat> this aspect of deviant art, which I've always loved, seems to be a dry well, and it's not just limited to deviant art. It is as if the entire planet is in a state of apathy and self-loathing at the moment. People bitch about themselves, about others, about Hillary, about Trump, and don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with being in a bad mood sometimes and nothing wrong with calling shady shit when you see it. And expressing the negative is just as authentically important as expressing the positive. I always acknowledge that. I have no problem with that. I'm completely fine with that. It just seems that lately... Being a time when people really do need to pull together and be compassionate and understanding and loving more than ever before, that the motivation factor in this has suddenly flatlined. Am I completely crazy for pointing this out? Is it somehow weird or wrong or bad for me to think that compassion and empathy is something people should be more focused on right now? Is it bad or offensive or creepy or inappropriate or somehow incorrect for me to be saying and more than saying outright insisting that we really need to move out of this collective mind fog? If so, this journal, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if so, this isn't the journal for you. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Move along. But if not, and if you resonate with what I'm saying, and you really truly uh, and you're really truly feeling aligned in your own heart with the words on this page then keep reading at the risk of seeming totally crazy and eccentric oh wait too late that ship has sailed i'm going to attempt something daring something irreverent something that might just get people a bit triggered because it's going to be something extremely positive no clue if it's going to work and i can't realistically have any expectations of success i'm going to try anyways and yes sometimes i use the word try just in order to kind of play the paradigms of the people reading it and to keep things shorter um sometimes you got to do that it's really about the the self affirmations don't program yourself with the word try um 
the totally triggering part about it, and oh, I just accidentally misclicked and opened up a little like box thing on here that I need to wait till it loads and then hit the X button to close it out again. That needs to go bye bye. Okay. <clears throat> The totally triggering part about it is that you're going to give it a try with me. No, that's not an order. I can't force you. But I can hope that your desire to be understanding might just exceed your desire to be understood. Maybe that's delusional on my part, but I'm going to roll with it anyways. I'm going to seek out people here on DeviantArt, those on my list of people I watch, which is a hell of a lot. And see who really could use some love and support right now. I'm going to add them to this journal. I'm going to explain why I feel they need it. And then make suggestions as to how you might, if you so choose, aid me in rendering it. For those who watch me, this journal will periodically pop up again in your notifications as I add to the list. Also... If you know of anyone in desperate need of love and support right now on DeviantArt, explain who it is and why you feel they need it in the comments below. I will add them to watch and add them to this journal and get that ball rolling. I'm going to show you what you might call a blanket plan of action. In other words, I'm about to explain universal actions to take with each person that gets added to this list. This way, it makes things less complicated and less worthy. Or wordy. Yeah. W-O-R-D-Y. <clears throat> Please take the following actions. One, add them to your watch list. That's an obvious one. Two, browse their gallery and journals. Look for anything and everything good about their content. Three, comment on their main profile comment section about their art as a whole. Give them the link to this journal. Four, make positive comments on one or more of their deviations. Five, make sure all comments are genuine and from the heart, not just cool art or I like it. That sounds fake and lazy. Six, write your own journal entry about the person, tag them in it, tag me in, in it, link to this journal encourage others to show them some love none of these things are too much for me to ask of any of you if you feel they are then that's rather sad now i begin the list there's a few people on this list right now it's not like you know like 20 people or anything so not going to be too horribly long um <clears throat> forever artist 5454 and the story about her is one I, I will also get into a little more in depth on this uh, on this hangout after I read the journal because it also ties into all sorts of other synchronicities and alignments and crazy stuff going on. Rochelle, that's her name, has been a dear friend of mine for about four years, give or take. More than just a casual deviant artist, I consider her as being one of the best female friends I have. She has done so much for me and inspired me so much. Her and I have had no shortage of deep, meaningful text and Skype conversations about life, the universe, and everything. She is kind, sweet, and thoughtful. Ultra badass epic artist. She does everything from photography to nail art to painting to drawing to digital art to race car driving. And the list just keeps going like the Energizer Bunny. She is so wise, philosophical, and insightful. She is one of those people who can change your life forever just by being herself, just by showing you that you are worthy of her kindness and friendship. Her deep, caring heart is virtually boundless. Without betraying confidences, I will tell you that she does have an all-too-common problem that so many of us have or have had. So what I'm about to tell you is hardly top secret. It's common. She is afraid that certain friends and family members will stop loving her if she does not conform to the psychological projections of what she thinks they expect her to. Uh, excuse me, what she thinks they expect of her. I can relate to this deeply. I've been there before. Haven't we all? I used to try to hide my authenticity or apologize for it and make excuses for it. I thought that being me was weird and wrong and not good enough. I tried to appease what I thought others wanted, which always backfired because it was always just my own projections of insecurity as to what I thought they wanted based on how I viewed myself. When in this state, 
be it her or I or any other human being who goes through this, it makes us perfectionists. It makes us feel as if nothing we ever do, no matter how good it might be, will ever be good enough. It creates an internal battle against our own creativity as we become neurotically obsessed with trying to get everything perfect. Out of fear of failure, we become so used, <clears throat> so used to this over the long term that even success begins to scare us because no one ever taught us how to emotionally deal with success. We think that if we succeeded, that we're so far out of our element that we'll just fuck it all up anyways, and that having and that having and losing that success will be far more painful than just continuing to fail. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> having those same beliefs about myself as she's had about herself. One of the key important ways she has really helped me is by being a continuous contradiction to my old self-defeating paradigms, showing me that she cares about what I think and feel. While having spent most of my life presuming no one could possibly give a shit, showing me that being who I am was important to her. Showing me what, it, what true friendship really is, clear communication, unconditional love and acceptance, that friends and family do not have to always agree with each other on everything, and that disagreement will not make the love go away. Similarly, me being who I am contradicted those paradigms within her as well. When we are down on ourselves, we're used to people looking at us as if something is wrong with us and acting as if we're doing something bad simply by being in a defeated mood, which then makes us feel even more defeated. Her and I both showed each other that we still accept each other in all moods and moments, that even when we're in a funk, that we deserve the love and support that neither of us have been used to getting. This is true friendship. This is what neither of us thought was possible. Simultaneously, I, of course, have had a few other friends who have shown me the same and vice versa. And I tagged them as far as their DeviantArt names and everything. So it pops up with the hyperlinks. I am Darkness Taylor, General Tate, Thinking Kristen, Katarina Edwards, Issa J, parentheses, who is no longer with us. No matter what, we are there for each other and do not judge each other. Right now, Rochelle is in a very deep funk. The sort where no, no one person could possibly have any hope of penetrating her walls. Not even me. In past experiences and also to her own admission, one thing that is very helpful is en masse contradictions. Meaning, when a whole hell of a lot of people are showing her the love simultaneously. She is no stranger to me making public calls for support and having it rendered by the community. This has helped her in her own personal growth and evolution as a person. So I am putting out yet another call for it. This is her biggest, strongest, thickest wall that she has up right now. I'm ill-equipped to get through it on my own. I need some help here. Though none of us can force her to take it down, and none of us can force her to see that she is worthy and deserving. Though none of us can force her to see that the people who truly love her are not going to stop loving her over some imagined failure to conform to projections she thinks are real, we can at least inspire her with the remote hope that it might make at least a dent in the wall. With the hope that she might question her self-defeating thoughts and might consider the possibility that maybe, just maybe, she is worthy of this and more. There are no guarantees, but damn it, I must at least give it a shot. I hope you will assist me. You might not. You might all be in your own funk, and I might, I might be only speaking to the four walls around me. But I have to put this out there anyways, otherwise I'll regret not having done so. Next person on the list is Alderog96. <laughs> I don't know Roger well, but he is, he is an extremely close friend of Rochelle's. <clears throat> I've chatted with him. I've spoken with him on Skype. He's a really cool guy. He's been there a lot for Rochelle and also has the same issues as Rochelle. So it can be quite the house of mirrors sometimes with those two. He is epic with photography. He is also, excuse me, he has so, so much pending on his hard drive 
that remains not uploaded. Rochelle has managed to grab a lot of it and add it, it to her profile, so you can check that out there. He too needs to know that he is worthy and deserving, that he does not have to push away love and support. He needs every bit as much as Rochelle does. He too has an equally impenetrable wall up at the moment. So please encourage him to upload more of his photography work, and it is no exaggeration when I say, Rochelle will appreciate your, your assistance even more than I will. She cares about him a great deal. Then another person, Sunshine Joy YT. According to a comment you can see below by Zuara, this girl seems to be in a very dark place lately. I don't really know her, but I can only speak from my own experiences of being in very dark places and hope that it might be useful insight. I've learned that there will always be people who love you and others who think you're the worst thing to happen to the world since Hitler. Some people just aren't happy unless they just aren't happy and haters gonna hate. On the flip side, there will always be people who think you're wonderful and awesome and the best thing since Chicago pizza. And Chicago pizza is the best thing, trust me. I'm from Chicago. I know these things. 10% of life is what happens to us, and 90% is how we decide to respond to it. Free will choice is our greatest gift and biggest curse in equal measure. It's like a hammer. It's neither good nor bad, but we can do good and bad things with it. All the negative is is a positive opportunity to create positive change. It's only a burden if we choose to insist that that's all it is and all that it can be. So though I cannot convince you of anything, and I don't imagine myself being capable of convincing anyone of anything, I can share my insights, hope that they help, and let the cards fall where they may. The next person is Kitantix, however you say that. Katie is a really sweet girl who has some epic drawing skills. I've not known her for an incredibly long time, but we Skype each other and text and stuff when time is available. She's British, so gotta love that accent. She is very intelligent, wise, awake, and aware, and it is refreshing to be able to have real down-to-earth conversations with a person like her. Due to various life circumstances, she is depressed a lot. She seem, excuse me, seems to be quite a common th thing in today's society. She said counselors are useless and that the big thing that helps her the most is genuine, authentic love and kindness from others. So let's give her lots of that. Zuara. This person is someone whom I do not know but has proven themselves to possess wisdom and genius beyond their years. Someone who is aware of their genius and wisdom but in the society we live in feels underestimated and underappreciated. Someone who has much to offer the world, but is afraid to step up and shine their light into the darkness. Once desire and determination exceed fear, this person will learn that instead of feeling paralyzed, adversity will only fuel them. The trial by fire will burn away the doubt to reveal the champion. The challenges will excite, yeah, the challenges will excite and inspire this person instead of making them feel debilitated by a world that doesn't seem to care. All who look upon this person will be inspired by their passion and mystified by their ingenuity. This person will be an enigma to all who seek to remain in ignorance and a visionary to all who wish to step into the light. This is the future that awaits this person once they decide to answer the knock at the door of opportunity, moving out of the fear of what might be awaiting them on the other side. More people to be added soon. The game is on, as Sherlock might say. Last note on there is something that needs clarification. I greatly appreciate the fact that people want to share and fave this journal. I appreciate the fact that they like what it says. I do, however, wish to make it, it clear that too, that too many people discuss love, kindness, and compassion as a topic of discussion as if it's nothing more than entertainment media, yet take no action and they do nothing. I'm looking for this to be a catalyst to inspire change, to invoke a momentum of positive action. I'm not looking for this to be yet more ideological lip service. And that's the end of the journal, and I'll pause there for you guys to provide your feedback and insights. Well, I think that, um, especially when it comes to creatives, 
so creative people are are very prone to to larger swings of emotion because creativity takes so much courage because it takes it takes so much um so much self-awareness in order to to put something out into the world that others might not like because as, as you are aware as a creative I mean you're putting your heart out there you're putting your you're putting your soul out there you're really you're really bearing yourself and uh, especially with regard to Rochelle's issue where she thinks that her, her family isn't going to like the things that she is um, that she's putting out or that people that she knows are going to to not like it for whatever reason oh with that I mean, with that it's it's not that aspect is not about her art it's about her being herself um mm -hmm. but when someone th thinks that them being themselves is not good enough they judge every every other aspect about themselves everybody who looks at her art thinks it's wonderful and awesome and is high praise and but it's her problem is that she's the one judging herself too harshly um you know, I, I've told her, I don't, I don't think that, you know, these, these family members and friends or whatever that, that love her, um, I, I don't think they're going to stop loving her based on a difference of, of opinion or her being herself. I mean, her being herself is awesome. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, I don't think any of these people ex expect, oh, you have to agree with me and think the way I do on every little tiny thing, one little misstep and you're gone. Bye bye. Fuck you. No, that's I mean, these people love her so much that that's not going to happen. But she is she's so incredibly down on herself that she thinks that's what's going to happen. Um, and I, I will talk, you know, more on that in a bit as far as the things that I'm not breaking confidences to to disclose, but even those will add more clarity beyond the journal. But I just want to make the point that it's not that it's not that she thinks people hate her art. She knows people love her art and that triggers her more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you need to be emotionally ready to receive love and especially to receive love from yourself. Self-love is the prerequisite to being loved by others because if you don't think you're worthy of being loved how on earth it, it causes such incredible cognitive dissonance when other people love you that it just completely breaks your brain mm -hmm. i think katarina can speak to that one <laughs> yeah as the uh, as the husband of katarina i'm sure that she can we're talking about so we're talking about self love and self acceptance as being the prerequisite to being able to accept others. Oh fuck yeah, yeah. Seriously, I think that that was one of the main reasons that our relationship was able to be as awesome as it is, Paul. And it's because, like, I did all the heavy lifting with Dave in the the first whatever five years, <laughs> four years. He got to deal with all of my crazy swings of self-hatred and self-loathing okay, i'll buy you a chicago pizza i know that the other <laughs> <laughs> yeah well um, okay so so her shifts are my fault just blame dave if you like something blame dave if you don't like something blame dave just blame dave it's the new in uh, yeah, thing. I mean, like, when you're not you, when you're not blaming paul blame dave that's it's 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 uh, the 11th commandment it's in there somewhere it's a good blaming it's a good blaming. i know i know i'm just teasing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Paul did something insensitive. Talk to Dave. <laughs> nah, you don't really do that anymore. You're pretty in tune with yourself. Yeah. But that's also because you stopped giving yourself shit and you stopped um, being so hard on yourself. So when you started accepting yourself more, you started being way easier on me. You remember that? I do. How that progressed. That's I why I don't I don't take this impenetrable wall that Rochelle has put up personally. Like, yeah, it hurts and it sucks and I don't like it, but I don't see it as like, oh, Rochelle's hurting me. I see the hurt as just like the inevitable result of being human and caring about somebody. Like I own that. Like that hurt is coming from me. It's not, you know, Rochelle is not at fault for anything or to blame for anything. It's just like yeah, you know, she's got this big ass, huge, massive, impenetrable wall up right now. And yeah, it sucks. So, you know, I love her. I care about her. I can't be there for her much as her friend right now because of this big, massive wall. So yeah, that hurts. That's not blaming her for anything. But I understand that she's going through exactly, you know, what you were just saying. It's It's hard to accept love from others when 
you know, you're not really loving or accepting yourself. And I've also noticed that it, when someone is in that position, when you when you bombard them with a mountain of of, of en masse more love than they can possibly handle, then they start to drive themselves crazy to the point that their operating system crashes and then they remove the wall. And then because they've exceeded their required levels of suffering that they put on themselves, they go, okay, okay, I'm, I'm open-minded now to processing through these paradigms and to learn to stop hating myself. I surrender, I surrender. But as indeed everybody who puts up a wall eventually has to, a wall is a defensive weapon. It's not an offensive one. Walls have no offensive capabilities, only defensive. And the, and so you just lay siege to a wall and eventually it falls. You can build cannons and stuff into a wall, but that's besides the point. Yeah, totally besides the point. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but the whole thing is just like, in order for people to shift and in, into more positive things and work through things and let things go, they have a they have a misery crack requirement. They have a belief system inside of them that says, "I have to get past X amount of suffering. It needs to in intensify to a certain extent until I'm willing to to do something better to myself." To you know, to stop giving myself such a hard time, I have to give myself the ultimate of a hard time. So one thing I've had to move out of out of judgment of, because like seriously, when we start to realize that love and compassion and all that, like when it comes into collision with those paradigms, the other person is suffering, we start to feel guilty. Like, should I withdraw my love and compassion and support? Because every time I give it to them, I'm hurting them. No, you're not hurting them. They're hurting themselves. And what I've realized to kind of move out of my guilt of that, because I used to feel guilty about that, is that this is a requirement they are putting on themselves. They they are stating, okay, in order for me to be willing to accept the help that I need, clear the paradigms that I need to clear, and to take it easy on myself, my misery crack requirements need to get to X. And if they never get to X, then I can never help myself. So this is a requirement that they are putting on themselves. So I know that's not my fault. So the only thing I can do is respect the requirement that they're putting on themselves and help them grant what they want by sending them so much love and so, so much appreciation and so much contradiction that they can totally and completely rage against and suffer in that raging against it to the point that they meet their requirement so they can say to themselves, okay, that requirement is now fulfilled. I am ready to chill the fuck out and stop hurting myself. And that's definitely been my, you know, my experiences. And I'm sure, we're sh or excuse me, I'm sure Katarina can definitely act as living proof that, um, you know, this is what I had to do with her and that, you know, it's the way things roll. I'm sure that she could. Is she not uh here? Oh, I'm here. I'm just on Facebook on my phone and you guys were talking. Yeah. Talking about responding to what you said and then directing it back at you again. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually a bit high right now, Dave. You're what? I'm a bit high right now. Oh, okay. So just letting you know. <laughs> Okay, well, I was just ex explaining how that, you know, um, you, Rochelle, and others have a certain misery crack requirement that needs to be met in order to be able to start being more self-accepting and stop abusing yourself. So the only thing I can do is respect that requirement and give you all the all the shows of love that I can't di directly or indirectly, anything I can do so that y'all can rebel against that and make yourself suffer so much to the point that you've met your misery crack requirement and then you're willing. Otherwise, if I don't do that, you'll never meet your requirement and then you'll suffer your whole life in misery and that would just suck. So I helped you through that That's one. pretty grim prognosis, my friend. Well, you know, so I was, I, what I was saying is that I helped you with that one. You've experienced that. I showed you so much love that it met your misery crack requirement. So now you're not abusing yourself anymore for the most part. But that's yeah. Yeah, exactly. So how is well, that a grim prognosis? 
it's easier for them to accept themselves too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how is that? How is that grim? That's not grim. If someone's putting that requirement on themselves, it's neither grim nor not grim. It just is what it is. And we have a choice to either respect it or not. Yeah. I see where you're going. I had to learn how to respect it instead of feeling using it to psychologically project my own insecurities on people and feel like a victim. I had to learn to understand yeah. the nature of this and learn to respect it. Okay. Well, they have the free will right to have that requirement on themselves, and that's not about me. And the only thing I could do to help mm -hmm. them is to respect this that they've placed on themselves. Because if I disrespect them, they're just going to cycle in the same old, same old forever. Yeah. That makes sense. So, I mean, that's that's the journey you and I went through. I mean, you even said that what where Rochelle's at right now reminds you of you like a couple of years ago or so, give or take. And I can't like point out the exact spot on the timeline. I'm sure neither can you. We don't well, keep such specific track. Huh? Various points in time. Yeah. Yeah. So you did say that she reminds you of you at a, at a certain stage of, of evolution within that and that you went through that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, which right now would be very hard for her to believe because, like, you know, she she's admitted that she puts you on a pedestal. You're you're like the, you're her Le Leah Tarunin of, of sorts, and you know, like, oh, yeah. Katarina's I, I perfect. She could never have gone through that. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. Oh. It's you eventually she will understand as she goes through it herself yep yep i think so as well and um i want to provide a, a little bit more detail that i didn't provide in the journal um over the last few years basically me and michelle had gone through these cycles where her self-loathing hits such a, a climax that, you know, she would, you know, unadd me as a friend on Facebook and, you know, completely stay away from Katerina and Richard and Kristen and, and so on and, and all this other stuff. But eventually she'd hit that suffering point that she could. <laughs> We're experiencing some shitty pussy right now. <laughs> so I have a hobby where I fart on animals. <laughs> and they can't like, they can't look to really stop. <laughs> I would be too if a big gust of smelly air just came up my nostrils. And asphyxiated me. Uh, oh my god, I think, you, I think you derailed that one. We could have been discreet about me farting on the cat. I'm sorry, I have no filter right now. Uh, okay, so no, why would you fart on the cat if you were trying to be discreet? Can I move? Can I? Can I you outwardly <laughs> trying to be obnoxious? Can I move? Can I move on with with filling people in? <laughs> Absolutely. And, unless, <laughs> unless you're trying to tell me that Rochelle is a cat that needs to be farted on, I'd like to move forward with the story. <laughs> you should have heard the noise the cat made. <laughs> well, the other day, for the first time, I got to hear hear what a pissed off frog sounds like. There's a a frog that jumped out of <laughs> out of the indoor pond into this into this one plant pot and um you know the last time it did that i grabbed it up and, and put it back and it didn't get mad at me but apparently that frog didn't didn't learn its lesson so it's back there again and i saw it and i i i scooped it uh, long story short i scooped it up and tossed it back into the indoor pond and while i was doing so it was making these 
really crazy pissed off noises that I've never heard come out of a frog before. And they were really loud. This, this frog was just extending its wrath onto me. It's disgust of like, Hey, I was comfortable in that plant pond. And then you're picking me up and putting me back in the pond. Fuck you, you asshole. I'm just going to totally cuss your ass out right now in frog language. It reminded me <laughs> of when, when squirrels get mad yet. You ever heard like when a squirrel gets mad, they make that crazy, obviously pissed off, like hard to duplicate squirrel tone. Like I'm not even going to try to, to mimic what that frog sounded like. It was crazy, but it was like pure wrath coming out of the vocal cords of that frog. That was like, Dave, fuck you. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, so so anyway, um, speaking of, of uh, the pure wrath coming out of beautiful creatures, moving on with uh, what I was saying about Rochelle. So, <clears throat> um, you know, she would hit the, hit the point of self-loathing, you know, to where she, you know, unads me and, and distances herself from everybody. She would never, like, block me on DeviantArt or unadd me from Skype or anything like that. But, um, you know, beyond that, she would just be like, you know, basically say like, oh, I, I don't want to talk anymore. This is too much. I can't handle this and blah, blah, blah. So for anywhere between a few weeks to a few months, um, she'd go through this process of fighting herself and being really hard on herself and feeling guilty that, oh my God, you know, Dave's been such a good friend and Katarina has been a good friend and all these people have been a good friend. And I'm just doing this horrible, terrible thing to them. And, oh my God, I'm feeling so guilty. They don't deserve this. And it would hit this climax for her suffering requirement at the time the bubble would burst and, you know, then, then she would come on back and we would talk about it and she would, you know, talk about all the different paradigms she was going through and why that happened. And we'd, you know, move through them and help her sort through them and so on. Then she'd evolve to the next step. And, you know, her, every time she'd take an evolutionary jump, you know, her life circumstances around her would always get like a thousand percent better, which would of course then trigger the fuck out of her for exactly, you know, what Paul was explaining before that, you know, when, you, when you're in this self-loathing and then you receive the opposite and you're external, you know, your brain just crashes and goes crazy in the cognitive dissonance. And ah, so this has happened a few times, but this time is the first time, the first time that she's actually blocked me on DeviantArt. So, you know, I was thinking, all right, well, I can't communicate directly, so... May as well just post a journal and spread the love in her direction from others. And as well, as as long as I'm doing that, may as well make this a group thing. Because, you know, a deviant apathy has been like on this downward misery spiral lately. And it's like, all right, so here's an opportunity to go ahead and, and really sprinkle, you know, the love around all over the fucking place. Like not just Rochelle's direction, but every and all directions as far as i can go let's let's detonate the the fucking unconditional love nuke and see how far the blast waves go and um i was still at it on skype until i decided to have a little fun and i changed my my skype skype status to be a cheerful giver the game is on and the game is on as a Sherlock reference. Like Sherlock is her like her favorite freaking, you know, show right now. So one of the things that, you know, her and I have discussed many times is like, you know, the idea of she's just like, Dave, you know, why why are you such a good friend to me? Why are you so kind? Why are you so so giving? You know, what do you get get out of that? You know, she's like, I can see what I get out of it, but what do you get out of it? And you know, just explaining that friendship is its own reward. And funny that, like, you know, it, after she does all this, like, you know, because she goes to church every Sunday, so she gets to see that pastor in person. But he's been talking about these very things. He's the he's the one I'm quoting when I say, you know, be a cheerful giver. Um, as a matter of fact, I'd like to, to take some of the content where he, he talks about that, little clips, and put it together and make it a PSEC episode. Probably will eventually. But, you know, just the idea that, 
you know, even as like what Jesus said, be thankful and appreciation and what metaphysics and, you know, new age say about positive thinking and state of being and being, you know, in the right vibration and all that. When you really fill yourself with that, you know, that thankfulness and that appreciation, you're able to appreciate what you have right now and see, see opportunity instead of burden and, you know, be able to do it, to face the negative in a positive way and all that. It's, it's very transformational. So it's not one-sided. Um, all involved benefit. It helps to shift reality itself. You know, you're able to make those, those ripples out, out in the world. You know, it's because like we were explaining before, everything's connected. Everything's in, in a pattern. There aren't singular causes. And the more you're in, you know, the awareness of that, then it makes more, more and more sense that what you put out, you get back that, you know, the, the idea is like to give is, is better than to receive. Cause it's not that it's better. It's the more you give, the more you receive. And in all sorts of ways that you never, you never really expected. And it's pretty cool and it's pretty interesting. And it, 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 it just feels way better to live life that way than to live life as a miserable fucking cunt that thinks the world is horrible. And, you know, like these, these globalist psychos that run the world and everything. And it's just like, you know, it's it's better to live in that state of unconditional love and curiosity and appreciation and thankfulness. That does not mean that that you won't think anything sucks. As a matter of fact, in that state, all the things that you think suck, you'll think they suck even more because you'll have perfect clarity as to why they suck and you'll think they really suck. <coughs> Your bad moods will be really bad. Your sad moods will be really sad. There will be more intensity of contrast of emotion when you go in these in these directions but it won't be viewed as victimization you'll be looking at it like wow look at that data there isn't that interesting this sucks so bad look at why look at all i've learned by realizing why that over there sucks so bad wow all sorts of interesting information that i didn't know before I'm really understanding why that over there really sucks. How interesting all the different ways that could suck. The dynamic of all that sucking. Wow, this is some really curious shit. This is interesting. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that makes sense. It got a little bit, uh, it got a little bit stream of consciousness there. <laughs> So hmm. your thoughts. Hmm. Well, well, by the way, if I didn't say so before, I, I forgot whether or not I mentioned, mentioned this, but upon changing my, my status message to something positive, um, Rochelle blocked me on, on Skype at that point right when I did that. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And then today, Richard Hamilton, uh, known as General Tate on, on DeviantArt, um, decided to get curious and do something similar. Um, he said, as per what I'm showing on the screen here, Rochelle just removed me from Skype after I changed my Skype message to this. Your heart is free. Have the courage to follow it. That's a quote from Malcolm Wallace. So it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting that that something positive like that, like you said, that collision, that cognitive dissonance, that just goes to show how much in self-loathing she currently is, that if Richard could just change his Skype status to an ultra positive quote and her immediate trigger mechanism is to block him off of Skype as well, that really says, it speaks a thousand words. It does. And it shows that, um, it, it shows that, when you're insisting on being the victim there that you perceive everybody else as being an attacker and and simply just making putting a positive message on your on your skype doesn't it, it doesn't mean that 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 uh that richard was attacking her at all it simply means that he was choosing to to put a positive message on there regardless of what his intention was she interpreted it through her own filters through her own lenses I actually yeah. don't think she viewed it as an attack. I mean, I know Rochelle pretty well, and that's mm -hmm. and I don't think she would have viewed it as an attack. She would have viewed it as simply 
that represents something that I don't want to face right now. So I'm going to push that away. And right now in my current mood, I'm going to push that away hard. Um, she's never viewed those things as an attack. So I just want to, I know her well enough to be able to, to kind of say that on her behalf. She, she never views these types of things as an attack on her. That's not the filter that that's running for her when those sorts of things happen. It's, it's annoying for her when it happens. It's like, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting shown my worthiness and I don't want to look at that right now because I just want to feel justified in my sense of unworthiness and no, that's annoying. Get it out of my face. It's like the swatting at the proverbial fly. It's not like that, mm -hmm. that fly is launching a nuclear assault on me. I must march out and genocide against all flies. It's just, you know, it's, it's not to that extreme. It's just the swatting of the proverbial fly. So I don't think she took it as an offense or an attack. I know her well enough to be able to say that. But she definitely did take it as, oh, God, something I don't want to look at. Get it away. I understand that, you know, like, oh, if that's saying that now, what else is it going to say in the future that I really don't want to look at? So it's more like her saying, yeah, Richard message received and fuck you. <laughs> it's like, I know what you're trying to do there. You're trying to you're, you're trying to, to get me to face my own malware here. And I, I don't want to do that. So, like, fuck you. You know, she didn't take that as an attack. She, she just her, her just like when she blocked me in in response to that. It's like, it's just her message to us saying, "I understand what you're trying to do, and I ain't in the fucking mood." Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's that's her right to not be in the fucking mood. Yep. And, uh, and 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 when you when you just sort of accept that, that is going to continue to trigger her also. Oh yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Because when you accept that and you're becoming that, then you're acting in that direction. So you're going to have the action, mm -hmm. your actions and inactions changed. You know to you know, away from what they might have otherwise been in past paradigms and what she might be used to. So obviously in situations like this, I can definitely say for a fact that she's been used to like, you know, if she were to, um, if she were to push someone away that they would be, be mad and angry and viewing that as, oh, Rochelle just did something naughty to me. And then their other, they tell their other friends and then that those friends would gang up on her like, oh, and then she's got all these people saying, Rochelle has been a naughty girl, shame on her, et cetera. And the, the totally the opposite of what she had been used to is happening right now. So there's this massive collision. And um, anyone watching this, if they go to Rochelle's DeviantArt profile, there are all sorts of people that have added her to watch and posted all sorts of lovely, inspiring, truthful comments and, you know, on her main page and on her various artworks and so on and so forth. So that energetically had her avoiding DeviantArt for like about five days. And then, you know, um, within, you know, this last, you know, 24 hours or so, it's like, you know, she had, she had ventured back and didn't respond to anything to anyone. She saw the, you know, the, the love and praise and support nukes come down in her DA message center, got triggered and, you know, and, unless she's decided to, you know, to go in there and, and check and respond to things since last I checked earlier today. And as far as I know, she hasn't done that yet. So she's experiencing the the unconditional love nuke. And and I'm sure that, you know, in her external reality on, you know, the impersonal level, friends, family, etc., that, you know, she's seeing all these reflections. I know she's seeing them in church. And, you know, she's probably getting bombarded by even more love, even more acceptance, even more abundance, and in all the ways that irritate the crap out of her. So it's like she's she's learning what I've told her many times. She can't run from herself. Mm -hmm. It's it's an aspect of herself that she's trying to run from. And that's not possible. Wherever you go, there you are. You're you. You can't run from that. Right. You can't. Yeah, that's a lot. I learned when I ran down to Costa Rica to kind of like, I really didn't like myself. And the same exact thing that she's going through, I have the same self-loathing and, and real issues with loving or caring about myself. If she were and, to push uh, everything and every, 
If she were to push everything and everyone away that reminded her of all the things inside of herself that she doesn't want to face, she'd end up just, you know, not going to work, not school, not anything. She'd be just in a closet facing herself like she, you know, kind of should have done to begin with. So it's like all of her efforts to escape facing herself only bring her full circle back to the very thing that she's trying to avoid doing. Because no matter mm -hmm. what, she is still herself, and she can't run from from that. Wherever you go, there you are. You're you, no matter what. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that everybody has to learn in their own way. Yep. I don't think it'll require her to go to go to Costa Rica and live in a shack and 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 experience um, naked qigong. I don't think it's going to get quite to that extreme. <laughs> no, but you know, she, she's probably not as stubborn as I am. I guess you have more experience in being stubborn, as do I. But um, I'm not going to discredit her. She can get really fucking stubborn, like Jesus Christ. It's only my understanding of her personal brand of stubbornness that has aided me. Um, <laughs> the willingness to understand her particular flavor of it. Mm hmm but yeah, she can be very, very, very fucking stubborn. And right now her wall is impenetrable. I cannot do it on my own. You know, hence the journal I wrote and all of that. I just cannot do it on my own. There's no way. Right. <clears throat> yeah, and... Um, Within everything that's been like culminating, all the contrasts and stuff, I know <clears throat> you just recently got a, a new great, excellent job, a dream job that, you know, you're going to be, I'll just say you're going to be making six figures with that. And it's a really laid back job and where you can be yourself and do what you love. And, you know, you just recently entered that. And because it's at an, at an art you know, sales place or whatever. Katarina's got opportunities to get her art in their gallery and all this wonderful stuff is, is you know, um, happening for you guys while simultaneously the Cubs are winning the World Series and, and just like all this stuff that's culminating. And then there's, you know, the, the political contrast on the other end. WikiLeaks coming out with all sorts of information that the elites don't want out and the various uh, political global elites throwing each other under the bus and stabbing themselves in the back. Like, like you said about progressives, you know, they, they, they end up eating their own. Um, so, you know, we see a lot of that happening. And so we see a lot of people, you know, looking at this and, and starting to open up and face themselves more and make a, a lot of realizations that they, they hadn't made. And I, I'm even seeing this reflected on, on television. Um, as far as television shows, like I, I watch a lot of different, very paradigm shifting shows. Um, one of them is called The Flash, and I made a little a little image graphic that you know um, describes this particular scene in The Flash, and there's a little screen capture there and stuff. Barry Allen explains everyone's deepest fear. He says, "You're right. It's me. It's my problem." I've just been feeling nervous about this new dynamic. I have everything that I've ever wanted right now, and I've never had that in my life. And in a lot of ways, it's more scary <clears throat> than having nothing because it's easier to fail than to succeed. And I really want to succeed. And I close that out with fear of success through addiction to failure. We can't defend our failure-based beliefs about reality if we're proving ourselves wrong through our own successes. That's a fact. And that's the self-sabotage mechanism right fucking there. Mm -hmm. so I was really impressed when I aligned with this and was watching this. I'm like, oh, yeah, no coincidence there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, you know, Barry Allen, the Flash, he just, you know, hits it like nail right on the fucking head. Just completely accurate, completely appropriate for the issues that people are facing right now. Totally. Yeah. 
and I, on DeviantArt, I be, I've been dealing with some, you know, a bunch of old paradigmers that they're learning to be more calm. They're, uh, they seem to be learning to discuss things rather than like, fuck you, you're wrong and go to hell and whatever. Um, <clears throat> I, I also, um, something I made um, recently, <clears throat> I took a pic, you know, well, I didn't like literally take this picture, but I found it on Google. Um, there's a picture of a, a cat with like this WTF face, like, oh my God, WTF, what's happening here? And um, <clears throat> I put the following text to it. I didn't fart on it though, but <laughs> I, I put the following text to it. We don't need healthy. We don't take care of ourselves. Then we poison the air, we poison the water, we poison the land. As a result, we end up with diseases and disorders that are the symptoms of this poisoning and malnutrition. Then we take more poisons to try to mask the symptoms of being poisoned. Then we take even more poisons to mask the symptoms of the poisons we've taken to mask the symptoms of being poisoned. Then we become depressed about all the poisoning. So instead of facing our emotions, we take yet even more poisons to avoid facing ourselves. <clears throat> then, yet again, even more poisons to mask the symptoms of the poisons that we've taken because we don't want to face our emotions about how we've taken poisons to mask the symptoms of the poisons that we've taken to mask the symptoms of being poisoned then we call this normal and rational and anyone who does not agree we say they are anti-health hmm. yeah yeah i mean i just like had to fucking say that shit like it is right there that's i'm not quoting anybody with that that's all me I've just been, you know, mm -hmm. looking at things as they've been, just, you know, just shaking my head and just that came out. And just like, yeah. You know, that's that's what the fuck people are locked into and it's completely fucking ridiculous. Right. Then of course there are some little art pieces and stuff that I that I did put up here, you know. Uh, whatever. I'm gonna like. Hold on, I gotta switch views. I'm gonna go from featured to all, so I can see exactly what is the most recent. Um, some other stuff that I've done over over the last month, just to kind of express my feelings. You know, not only um, you know, about the situation with Rochelle, but you know, things that are have just been you know going on all around in life in general. Everybody that. The geopolitical stage, freaking everything. Um, <clears throat> there's one I did that says people are always trying to run, to move forward, to move on. But there is a difference between moving on and letting go. If you do not let go, then what you seek to move on from will remain with you no matter how hard you try to run. There is nothing and no one on the external that you can run from when the problem is internal. And that's just me, mm -hmm. me quoting me on that one, just me kind of venting. <clears throat> yeah. Then there's 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 one that I didn't make, but I had to upload this because it's pretty cool. Um, don't try to think outside the box to understand that there is no box. Although I personally would, have, you know, it's like that's true to a point. There is a box, but it's a construct. The box doesn't absolutely have to exist. There's no law that says, oh, that box is there. You can do nothing about it. It's something we create, or to to use a, a once upon a time quote, um, evil isn't born, it's made. You know, so mm -hmm. we've got all these different constructs, what we think of as the idea of good or evil or right and wrong and, and, you know, things that, oh, this must be, these are absolute, but they're not, they're all, they're all constructs, they're all choices, they don't absolutely exist. And I'm not saying that as, you know, some sort of a claim to say there isn't morality, of course there is morality. What I'm trying to say is that we 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 make up all these excuses to to justify shit and to psychologically project and you know all this and that. We we point to all these different excuses and act like they're absolutes, and we we do harm to ourselves in these ways. You know, operate in these logical fallacies, and yeah, that's all I'm pointing out with that. Um, then there's another one. 
it is a gift to have a wonderful capacity to appreciate again and again freshly and and <clears throat> naively the basic goods of life with awe pleasure wonder and even ecstasy albert um camus and um i added to that the annoying things in life you um used to be an excuse for me to feel like a victim now they're an excuse for me to appreciate life now more than i did <clears throat> the day before it's all a matter of choice of perspective everything is either a burden or an opportunity you get to pick which one yeah Yeah, because it's, it's simply a matter of perspective. I used to hang around with a guy who, you know, one of his favorite sayings was, you create your reality. And I don't think that you do. I just, I think that you, I think you just decide what your reality means. Well, on, on one, on one level you do and on one level you don't, um, language is a tricky fucking thing. Because there's a there's a context for you create your reality, which is completely correct. But then there's there's a context that is delusional. Um, it's that it's that absolutist literalist thinking that we attach to language as we as we worship authority, and we lock ourselves into that. That we think something absolutely only means one thing, and you know, etc. Um, see. The way I describe the way reality works on on a quantum level is is kind of like um, kind of like chatting on Facebook in a way I use this analogy. Let's say you're in a chat with someone on Facebook and you're both sitting there thinking you're chatting on Facebook, but that's actually <clears throat> um, really not what you're doing. You're not having the singular experience called chatting on Facebook. Because Facebook is a server from which content is being pulled and going through. So that's one point. There are three total points. That central point of convergence called Facebook.com. And then there's your computer and then there's their computer. And you and mm. the other person are pulling a copy of that content down. And you each have different makes and models of computers, different operating systems, different screen re resolutions, perhaps different browsers and so on. And when you change the settings on your computer to make things look different for you, it doesn't necessarily change the other person's because, like, you know, if I change my screen resolution right now or whatever, that's not going to do anything to your computer, right? It's got nothing, mm -hmm. nothing to do with it. Or if I install some sort of Firefox plugin that's going to, like, change the size or the color or whatever of the text on the screen, that changes for me, not you. The only thing, yeah. the only thing that is co-agreed upon, co-created, and, and co-shared, it's just that when I speak, those words end up on your screen just as well as mine, and vice versa. But other than that, we each have a separate reality which we then create. Mm -hmm. Because, and you know, again, if I change the screen resolution in my reality, my computer, that doesn't affect you in your reality, your computer. Because all we've done is we've pulled, we've each pulled our own copy of the co-created reality into our separate realities. But each of us have a separate reality. That's the way physical reality works because it's holographic, it's energetic. This thing you think is one physical reality that everybody shares, that's not the case at all. You know, it's more like each of us has a computer and is downloading a copy of the reality. And then any edits we make in our copy are only made on our end. Um, the only things that are shared between the different realities are the co-created agreements. Like, all right, we have gravity and we're on a planet orbiting a sun and, you know, the many other things that you could say that are co-created shared agreements that, you know, what then happens to me happens to you happens to everybody because they're all agreements. If I jump up, I'll come back down. If you jump up, you'll come back down. There's, there's gravity. It exists. It's there. It's, it's one of those shared things. But there's many things mm -hmm. that are not shared between realities. So that that is what it means that we create our reality. That you know we that we might not have have made and manufactured the Lego blocks of reality that are out there and available. 
but we get to decide in our own lives what blocks we're going to use, which we're going to keep in the box, and how we put them together. So in that way, we create our own reality. We get to decide that for ourselves. We get to decide yeah. whether we're going to pursue working at the art art gallery, making a lot of money, or whether we're going to decide life is no longer worth living and and you know make a Darwin Award dive off a bridge. We get to create that for ourselves, and that is our reality. That you know, when 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 uh, you get the job at the art museum, that doesn't mean everybody in the world also got that job simultaneously. Um, when somebody jumps off a bridge, that doesn't mean that they had somehow forced everybody else in the world to also jump off a bridge at the same time, and suddenly the human race goes extinct for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we all do each create our own reality in that way. What is just commonly not understood is that these realities cross. They, they intersect. That's how we have experience. They cross. And at those crossing points, they are shared. The experience is shared. But we also get to view that experience each from our own perspective. Put a pessimist, a pessimist and an optimist in the same shared experience together. Oh, they're going to see that two very different ways as per their own separate realities that they are creating. <laughs> mm -hmm. They totally are. Because a pessimist and an optimist cannot agree on anything. Yeah. The next thing I have on my screen here that, that I made, which was kind of a part of a comment in a Facebook thread that Kristen forwarded, you know, to me that I participated in as far as like, you know, some of the new agey logical fallacies. Um, it says what you, I, well, this is what I typed in. This is what the thread said. This is what I'm saying. What you resist persists. When you shun the dark, you make it grow. When you ignore the negative, you empower the problem. Energy flows where attention goes. When your attention is on fear with your fake love and light, then, then withholding your compassion is the darkest, most negative thing that you could ever do. It is spiritual narcissism. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people that fall into that, aren't there? They toss these affirmations around. They don't understand what the fuck they're saying. And they use it as an excuse to be narcissists. I have definitely experience. Kind of reminds me of someone lately. <laughs> but I won't go there if you don't. I will not. All I'll say is... Get your rape speech off of my Facebook, and I will leave it at that. <laughs> that little jab there. I'll just, I'll, I'll leave it at that vague. You'll just see that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Some people just don't want rape speech on their Facebook. What can we say? <laughs> Triggly pus of the world unite. Yeah. I just think it's funny because I got to make a hilarious picture that made my wife laugh. Yeah. If I don't like your opinion, it means you're raping my reality. Yeah, okay, whatever. <clears throat> Victimhood much? Yep. Quit raping my reality. Okay. And then this other thing that I did an image for and wrote the words to. Um, doing things to attempt to avoid the judgments of others is nothing more than a futile attempt to delay the inevitable. If someone is determined to judge you, there is nothing you can do to prevent them from manufacturing their own psychologically projected reasons. So just be yourself. At least that way, the people who have decided they are not going to judge you can know you exist. Mm. And that's not any quote from anyone other than me. That was just me yet again doing a short little rant because I am just had been looking at the world and doing a few face palms there and just, you know, that kind of came out. Right. And then here's one that I didn't like personally make. It's one, one I found, but it definitely reminds me of the things um, Rochelle is going through. Our culture has accepted two huge lies. The first is that if you disagree with someone's lifestyle, you must fear or hate them. The second is that to love someone means you agree with everything they believe or do. Both are nonsense. You don't have to compromise convictions to be compassionate. 
And that's kind of exactly mm -hmm. the, the dilemma that Rochelle's facing. Like her own self-loathing is making her think that like, oh, if if I don't agree with with, you know, my parents and certain friends and this and that, and et cetera, you know, it, the, whoever exactly the specific people are that she's projecting onto with this, um, then if, if I don't agree with them, they are going to fear or hate me. They, their wrath are, is going to come down on me. Their love is going to be withdrawn. Oh, it was me. And, you know, the same for, you know, agreeing with everything they believe or do. Like, oh, if I don't at least act as if I, uh, I agree and believe with every little thing they say about everything, their love is going to be withdrawn and their wrath is going to come down on me. And, oh, woe is me and et cetera. And I find that, right. uh, you know, the people that Rochelle is in fear of this happening with, I mean, I at least know enough to, to know that I can say I find that highly unlikely. I, I don't think any of these people are going to, you know, cast her out or spew venom at her for simply having, you know, differences of, of, of opinion on some things. I mean, geez, you know. Um, and there's an, another thing that I made here, too. If you wish to know if someone is truly your friend, please consider this. Imagine a tree... Imagine that this tree genuinely is a tree and is not an elephant pretending to be a tree as a part of some elaborate deception. <clears throat> no matter how much you yell at the tree, hit the tree, or drive nails into the tree, you cannot force the tree to turn back into an elephant because it was never an elephant in the first place. When someone is genuinely your friend... You can say as many cruel things to them as you want in an attempt to get them to prove that they were never your friend in the first place and it was all just some elaborate deception. And all you will accomplish is hurting a true friend who still won't stop loving you no matter how many cruel things you say to them. It hurts because they love you and it's not a switch they can turn off or that you can force them to turn off. They will always be your friend. <clears throat> they just can't force you to always be their friend. They take the risk with you knowing this fully. They cannot do otherwise. They can only do their best to learn to be at peace with the fact that the only thing they have control over is themselves. Yep. And that's just a part of my personal journey that I'm sharing. And obviously, Rochelle has put that square in my face. And that's why I wrote it. I'm not going to deny that. Hmm. Well, that's really, that's something that you've taught me a lot of, um, you know, via Katharina, when she talks about how, how um, you have unconditionally been a friend to her and how, how it's really positively impacted her life. Because it taught her what friends are and do. Which just goes to the next thing I just threw up on the screen that was actually sent to me um, by Kristen. And it was a post on, on Facebook. <clears throat> it says, genuine love is friendship. Genuine love resides only in the present moment. Genuine love is every day. Genuine love feels no need to entertain the space away. Genuine love is up. Genuine love is down. And yet genuine love never wavers. And apparently mm. that is from someone by the name of Waylon Lewis. And I'm guessing it's a part of a book they wrote called Things I Would Like to Do With You. I've never heard of the person or the book, but it's a quote nonetheless. And it's appropriate. It is. Supergirl is another really good show. And one that Rochelle re really likes, at least when she's not feeling so triggered um and i don't think she knows that that season two of, of supergirl is on right now but season two episode one was was very reflective i was on the edge of my seat with it and i couldn't help but but take down a quote from it um it's it's a paraphrase quote it's paraphrased slightly because like the person who made this quote 
was, you know, um, speaking in a context of referring to a certain character by name that they were talking to. So I put it in the context to where anyone who's reading it can, can, um, it's aimed at, at, at people generally. Dive. You're standing on the shore, afraid to dive into the new waters. You're afraid because you don't want to say goodbye to the person you've always been. You are standing there, looking out at your options, the icy blue water, the fast-flowing river, the choppy sea, and they all look very appealing because you're dying to go for a swim. But you know that that water is going to be cold and the journey is going to be hard. And when you reach the other side, you will have become a new person and you're scared to meet that new version of yourself. Now, we all get used to our own personas, and we're all used to our own comfort zones, but trust me, in order to live, we must keep daring, keep diving. You have the integrity to right wrongs and to see justice done. You inspire people. There is a hero within you. Cat Grant, Supergirl, Season 2, Episode 1. And that just aligns with, you know, everything Rochelle has been facing. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, um, Rochelle also looks quite a bit like the chick who plays Supergirl. I actually did one time did like a side by side, you know, like two pictures sort of thing. And, you know, um, it was just, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty interesting. And Rochelle also has a lot, a lot in common with the Supergirl character because the supergirl character is really really just like in, empowered and inspirational and in all the ways that rochelle is but at the same time um cara danvers who is supergirl she's got all of these self-worth issues and self-image issues and all of these insecurities and inferiority complexes and, and self-worth stuff and just like it's it's a perfect metaphor for what Rochelle's been going through. Right. Which is why when she feels like facing these things, she loves Supergirl. And when she does not feel like facing these things, she avoids Supergirl like the plague. And, you know, there's some other ones I did. Dichotomy, disrespects, and otherwise sabotages the process of beneficial recovery. Um, the greater our addiction to fear, the more love becomes our enemy. Life is 10% what happens to us, 90% how we choose to respond to it. So, yeah, you know, these are... And these are definitely things that I I will admit that I have created as a direct result of Rochelle putting up this wall and what all of that has reflected to me. So I'm I'm not going I'm not going to deny any of that. Right. So yeah, it's been it's been a pretty interesting month then. You know, there's there's been a lot I personally have been shifting through and becoming aware of and um, a lot that as I clear stuff, I've also been getting more stuff done around here and things have been going more and more smoother around here. I, I can tell you that that right now as it stands, like, you know, my pond room is like the greenest I have ever seen it. <laughs> yeah, Pepper Ray told me you had a, um, an issue where your pumps failed and it was kind of like an unintentional but needed upgrade um it wasn't well i did have a i did have a, a pump fail that was along with a part of a synchronicity but the big synchronicity was that half of my electrical system down there literally went snap crackle pop um mm. it, it was in need of of upgrading and i realized in that moment that the only reason it wasn't up uh, being upgraded was because of my own belief systems it stated oh i need i need to, to wait until i have the money i need to wait until this and wait until that when truth be told you know i have amazon prime and if i spend over a certain amount it's six months no financing and 
you know, I, I can easily pay that off. It's, you know, it's, it's just the, um, you know, the building, the building up of, of interest that can be tricky, but when you've got six months, no freaking interest, then you've really got no excuse other than your own paradigms, especially when you know that you can pay it off on, under those conditions. Like if someone doesn't know whether or not that they can pay that off under those conditions, and by all means, please look before you leap and don't be stupid and definitely be careful. But I know that I can pay that off. I already know that. So it's like the only thing that was holding me back was the, was the excuses that I was making for myself. So I was literally forced to do an immediate upgrade. And, um, mm -hmm. It's a lot better now, and I definitely greatly more prefer the the, the setup now um, than to what it was. And you know, I, I just it just kind of helped me show myself that it's me taking creative action in my own life that you know the dominoes fall towards more things that I'm wanting and it's me that has to do the work. I can't wait around for the time when, oh, well, I'll do it when this happens or I'll do it when that happens or I'll do it when I see this or I'll do it when I see that. I have to use my imagination and figure out how to take action steps in the direction to where I'm wanting to go. Otherwise, I'm just going to be sitting there idle forever with whatever it is, you know, that I'm, I'm looking to, to move in the direction of. So that's been like one big reflection to me. So like, you know, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, just honored my belief systems because my belief systems, similarly to Rochelle's, they see we have these things in common. We're like, oh, well, I have to reach a certain point of circumstantial misery in order to be willing to do a forward shift into uh, more productive thinking and more productive results. So similarly to Rochelle, that requirement needed to be met. And that requirement mm -hmm. was met through half my electrical system going snap crackle pop in the pond room right i had to replace it and in a very big hurry so you know overnight delivery all that good stuff blah 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 um but yeah but that's what i required of myself in order to learn that lesson and my requirements were simply being respected by god the universe by quantum physics by whatever English language word anybody wants to use. Um, my self-imposed requirements were being respected, respected, and it showed me that, yeah, those were self-imposed requirements. So when crazy contrast hits, it's not God punishing you. It's not the universe hates you. People might want to consider paying attention. Do I actually have a requirement for this to happen? Am I telling myself that this is what it's going to take to push me forward? Am I actually refusing mm -hmm. to do the easier thing? So instead of feeling, oh, oh, it's me, I'm a victim, nothing good ever happens to me, people might want to ask themselves, am I requiring this? Yeah. And something interesting happened, you know, when Kitharina decided, or when Kitharina and I decided that we were going to move to Maui, we both, we both knew that it was the thing that was necessary, but we were both waiting for some sign and consequently not moving forward. And, and because we were like in two different places at once, we weren't doing shit over on Oahu and we weren't doing shit towards moving on Maui. And so we decided we had to take the lead and do it. And the impetus was really that my, my job started to suck so badly that you know, my job, which had previously been just a total piece of cake that, you know, the one, um, a key employee got sick for an extended period and all of his workload get shifted over to me. And, um, you know, it just, it sucked so bad that I was like, I gotta get out of here. I gotta do something, anything to, to make this stop. And that was really what was required. That was, that was the impetus necessary to really, uh, to, to get us to come over here and do it. But without that, like we would have just been waiting for a sign forever. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, <laughs> a lot of people <clears throat> don't realize that when that contrast happens, it's literally because they've required it. They're sitting there saying, mm -hmm. nope, I'm not willing to move until or unless I get that hammer to the head. Yeah. 
And then when they get the hammer to the head, it's like, oh, well, it's me. God hates me. I'm such a victim, this and that, blah, blah, blah. You mm -hmm. know, whatever. God, the devil, society, the globalist elites, you know, pick your blame target. <laughs> but definitely don't mm -hmm. look at yourself and go, gee, am I actually requiring this to happen? Am I being so stubborn that I'm going to sit there idle and do nothing positive, nothing productive, and literally wait for this sort of hammer to drop? Am I fucking requiring? Wiring that god forbid we look at ourselves and ask that question mm -hmm. so yeah we've all been run through the ringer lately me you katarina rochelle richard's been run through the ringer lately kristen's been run through the ringer lately Everyone's been getting run through the ringer lately. Like, this is like the time of really being run through the ringer. And it's so appropriate. The positive contrast collectively. Cubs win World Series. Yay. Hell froze over. That one dude does not, wouldn't have had to worry either way. But, um, you know, aligned with the contrast of, you know, this is um, the, the um, 2016 circus as far as being an election year. <laughs> and we're really, you know, we're we're really close up on, on the elections to where either Trump is going to figure out a way to get a, around the C electoral college where Wall Street always picks, you know, the new mafia Don to run this corporation of the United States of America, Inc., or that Hillary is definitely going to get it no matter how many votes, fake votes she steals from dead people and how many bodies she leaves in her wake and how absolutely obvious the whole thing is that she's still going to get it because the Wall Street overlords have deemed it as such. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see whether or not we've made enough shifts that a monkey wrench can be put in the electoral college scam to actually have a fair election. Um, now I'm not I'm I'm not for or against Trump. I'm looking at it from the premise of will this be the first time ever that the election's actually been fair? Or will it be the usual same old, same old rigging that is always done? Because people mm -hmm. don't realize when two candidates compete, because it's always Wall Street that selects the new Mafia Don overlord, that all of the all of the election campaigns are about. They're not really election campaigns. It's more like two employees that are fighting for the same position. So they're doing a combination of kissing the boss's ass and throwing each other under the bus. And whoever can get, kiss the boss's ass the best and throw the other guy under the bus the most efficiently, they get the position. So it's, no, the, it's, it's the corporate structure. That's literally all that goes on with election campaigns. It's all it ever is. People don't realize it. Because mm -hmm. think about it, to run for, for most positions within uh, elections, whether it's president or senators or, or whatever the case may be, you have to have you know practically more money than God in order to even campaign. And the only way to get that is through Wall Street. So if you're getting that through Wall Street, then who are your loyalties beholden to? There's no way for the average person to to go and run i mean you know there's the old adage that it, you know anybody who was qualified for the position wouldn't want it in the first place because it being what it is you know there are people who sometimes make the shifts of yeah i don't want it and it sucks but you know if i if i could run i would because i i want to try to make to make the positive change even though i don't want to rule over anybody and the system's totally scummy i i would like to at least try to see what i can do those people can never even get on the ballot those people never stand a chance in hell because they don't have the wall street backing to do the campaigning and if they did have mm -hmm. the Wall Street backing, they wouldn't be able to do what they're setting out to do in the first place because they would be holden to the bribery and blackmail simultaneously of their Wall Street masters who, who put them on the campaign trail, not beholden to the people. The political mm -hmm. system's like a pool of diarrhea. Doesn't matter who you are, black, white, rich, poor, saint or devil, if you jump into that pool, you're going to be covered in shit. Mm 
Yeah, interesting perspective. Pool's got to be emptied and cleaned out. Is Trump going to be the one to do it? I don't know. I can't say. I mean, I'm glad mm -hmm. that, that Trump in the news media has revealed a lot of things to such as the point that there's certain topics we can actually discuss generally now that like before nobody wanted to discuss it or face it or anything like oh you're a conspiracy you know we can't talk about that whatever we're not going to go there i don't want to see that but now because trump has discussed all these things whether you like trump hate trump or are impartial trump is now a permission slip to be able to openly discuss those things without feeling like you're violating some sort of taboo mm -hmm. so trump has done that service and regardless of whether or not Trump can win fairly in a fair election or the Selectoral College does its usual thing, Trump is not exactly going to be shutting down his voice after that point. He's still going to be speaking and people are still going to be listening. And that, I think, is more important than winning an election or not. Because everything he's saying, no matter how crude, rude, and disrespectful he phrases it, is making people think. So whether you like or dislike Trump or have no opinion, he's still making everybody think in unprecedented ways. So I want him to keep doing that well beyond 2016. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Oh, I think that uh, he's a very interesting candidate. I've, I've never particularly liked him, even when, you know, long, long ago, I, I thought he was a bit of a narcissist. Um, but you know what, like, to be frank, it's it's refreshing to see that there's somebody who is so anti-establishment and getting so much attraction. Now, dictators always rise to power by pretending to be anti-establishment because all they really are is anti the current establishment. They want to run their own totalitarian regime. But what I like is he's... He's the first in history to actually address the issues rather than pretend to address the issues because all tyrants kind of pretend to address the issues. There's no deep digging. It's all lip service. They all, they all say what the people want to hear, but they never dig into the uncomfortable, dirty details. Um, and Trump digs into those, and that's why half of everybody who hears him is highly offended. Oh, my God. Trump said that. <sighs> Oh, Wall Street's responsible for ISIS. He said that. Oh, my God. He's saying that, that, that Obama and Hillary are in league with that. Oh, my God. How terrible. Oh, and, and no dictator ever trying to ri rise to power has ever been so blunt about so many things. Plus, um, Trump admits his own level of scumbaggery, which is also why he's hard, hard to shoot down. Someone will come at Trump and say, oh, yeah, but this and this and this. And Trump's like, yeah, so I don't deny that. But you all do the same thing. So pot kettle black. Right. And they don't know. Yeah, to, it's very interesting. Yeah, they don't know how to respond to that. And how then, can you? And then they're so desperate they make shit up about Trump. Like here, Which is it, hilarious because not caricature of himself. Yeah. Like one yeah, of my like one it. of my personal favorites is the allegations that Trump supposedly said that all Muslims need ID badges like, you know, like like the Jews in Nazi Germany and all that. And Trump never said it and if he did say it it was like behind closed doors and there's no proof. Um the the only reference to to anything like that is there was a text interview that Yahoo News did. And supposedly Trump said that. They put that in there. But it's like text doesn't prove anything. I could write text that supposedly Paul Roy said that he was molesting chimpanzees down in Costa Rica. Typing the text doesn't make it true. So when people are all get all on that bandwagon, they usually don't even know that it was just a text interview and that, any, that text can be manipulated any which way. And I tell these people, look. I'm not looking to side with Trump or be against Trump. I'd just like to know the truth. So if you could find me some video where he actually said it, 
and long video, not a short, tiny clip that can be taken out of context, but long run video to where I could see the full context and see that he actually did say that, then I'll be forced to look at that and go, okay, that was the truth of the matter. He really did say that, and that's kind of a problem, and I'm not, I'm not really liking that too much. But hearsay is not evidence. Mm -hmm. And the, these people, they get so upset with me because I, I'm having the audacity to to insist upon evidence instead of blindly believing them. I'm just like, hey, you can get as mad as you want. I'm not going to blindly, blindly believe something just because you think that I should. Um, I'm going to insist upon evidence, and I'm happy to review evidence, and whatever the whatever the truth is, according to evidence, is and okay, and and whatever, fine. If it can, something can be proven. Cool, it can be it can be proven. I'm not going to argue it or dispute it. But if someone's just saying because I said so, because unicorns and I hate Trump, that's not evidence. Okay. Uh -huh. And with the internet now, you have a plethora of ability to get evidence, so there's no excuse for not having it or providing it. Yeah, and then whenever these people try to look like, they, they, they assume there has to be evidence somewhere. So because of what I say, then they bother to actually check, and all they find is that text article from Yahoo. And there's mm -hmm. no there's no visual, audio-visual evidence. There's nothing that proves that he said it. Now, evident, yeah. uh, now um, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, so I can't say he didn't say it. I just can't say he did say it. There's no evidence in either direction. Mm -hmm. So I can't say one way or another. So the people that are trying to say one way or another, I'm just like, well, can I get some proof of that? Yeah, they can't either. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> proving what someone didn't do is impossible, but proving what someone did do is possible as long as there's evidence. <clears throat> mm -hmm. No one can prove that someone didn't ever say something, but if something someone said is, is captured in, in evidence, then it can be proven with that that they said it. But you also, yeah. have, you also have to be real careful and get the um, get the long version of things. Like um, one thing that they try that Fox News tried to pull on Live and Bundy or Clive and Bundy back during the <clears throat> excuse me the Bundy Ranch standoff and all that shit. Um, Fox News went in to interview him, and all of a sudden you, you see like oh you know. They're saying Bundy's racist. Look at what he said, and they have, they have this clip of a uh, Bund Bundy saying like, "Oh yeah, you know them, them niggers. They're this, and they should be blah blah blah, and etc." Then everyone's getting all up in arms. But then the full interview got released, and the context was restored. And he, he said, "I I'm intolerant of racism. I don't I don't like racism at all. I can't stand people who have the attitude where they're up there talking like, oh, I hate niggers and this and that, et cetera, et cetera." So he was actually speaking against the people who speak like that. But then, you know, Fox used the little short clip and spun it to act as if that was his attitude. Yeah. But then the long clip ended up leaked. And so it was just like, yeah. So Fox Fox News made huge assholes of themselves. Which has been a very interesting feature of this particular election because in, in this particular election, mainstream media has lost all credibility. Oh, yeah. Even among people who historically have trusted it. I mean, they overplayed their hand. Plus, they are literally... They've literally been stupid enough to go on record saying that um, the mainstream media, these outlets, are in support of Hillary and are backing Hillary. See, media right. out, media outlets are supposed to be politically neutral. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that just goes to show that they're willing to do anything to support Hillary. And it's not even simply a matter of their opinion is they like Hillary. They've they've admitted that they're getting money from the from the Clinton Foundation. That they're getting lots of bribe money in order to support Hillary. 
Yeah, they're literally on record. They've literally been dumb enough to admit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very hurt. What? I said it's very, very interesting. Yeah. Totally. So as far as the timeline of things I've wanted to say in this review of the last month and all, all the craziness, I'm pretty sure I haven't left anything out at this point. Is there anything else you guys want to want, want to say as far as, you know, this last crazy month or anything else? No, I think that's about it. And it's, it's bedtime for us. So I think it's a good time to uh, cut this little episode of Who's That? Yeah, it's beyond bedtime for me. It's um, it's almost four in the morning. Yeah. But I'm still happy to be on here and do this anyway because I just wanted to get all this stuff out. And it was cool that I was able to align with you and, and Katerina for this as well. Is she still awake or did she pass out yet? She is still awake. Uh, she's kind of looking tired at this point. She's still awake and say goodbye. <laughs> Kater- she says peace out. Yeah. Katarina, anything you want to add before we close out? No. All righty. Well, all you kids out there, be good. Don't do crack. Don't fart on cats. <laughs> do, do as we don't do. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, so hope everybody has enjoyed this and found this insightful. I am, of course, going to be adding this video at the bottom of the, you know, where did the love go um, deviant art journal there, seeing as we, we covered a lot of that in there. So I think it would, it would be good to, you know, to add that in um, on there. So obviously in the multimedia description, the, you know, the deviant art link, the content link for social media is definitely going to point there because that is going to be embedded. Um, so for those watching on YouTube, obviously it takes me a little bit to totally fill out all the details for everywhere things go up on social media. So if you don't see the journal link on there yet at the time you're watching this, you know, wait a little bit, it'll get there, I'll add it up there. Or you can just go to paradigm-shifting.deviantart.com, check my journals and see where the thing says, where did the love go, and click in there and boom, and you can get to that. Um, You can get to Katarina's uh, website, um, katarinaroy.com, and um, Paul's website is pauljroy.com, I think. Uh, you could, but uh, it's actually closed down right now. It's ah. undergoing a, uh, a redo as I'm refocusing on what I like to like to talk about. And you and Katerina also can go our, also have a brand new joint website, which is far more entertaining, which is moneypowerstack.org. Exactly what I was about to about to cue you here for, because I know that you guys have a new joint YouTube channel. Like Paul, I know you run like two YouTube channels of your own. You got a Paul Roy channel and you've got a, 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 a nine to five and a live, whatever that one was. And Katarina's got, you know, her own, but now you both have a, a joint channel. Which is, I dare say a lot more fun. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely the thing that we're really working on and putting money or uh, effort into right now is money power sex because, well, that's what people want more of is money power sex. Or shall we say what people want to understand more of and get out of the dichotomies to not, you know, repeat all the same mistakes of, of, of the past, which is which is also what the 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 buy the book series at, at Rochelle's churches is, is uh, focusing on right now as well. It's interesting how much in parallel you guys suddenly are with that, seeing as neither of you knew that West Bull's church was having um, that particular sermon series right now, and here you are creating a new YouTube channel and website based on exactly the stuff that they are talking about. So more evidence of that quantum fractal in action there. That's pretty fucking cool and crazy. 
Yes, yeah, it is. Totally in alignment. Yep. So yeah, that's what we got. Alrighty, so everybody, go ahead and, and check out the website there, and and I'm sure that um that their 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 videos are on there. Your, your videos are on your website, right? Yeah, we have uh, blog posts on there, and I've been just uploading the videos to the website, which basically just links to YouTube because I don't want to post any videos. Yeah, so the point is, is through the website you can get to the YouTube channel. That's my point. Exactly, and we have a Facebook page. The money power sex page. Yeah, let's things. yeah, let's seeing it as a, I'm in screen share mode. I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna demonstrate that right now anyway. Um the my, uh, there we go, it's coming up right there. The money. What's coming up? There it is. Oh, also the stuff going on with the with the Sioux protectors um, at Standing Rock and the um, DAPL um, pipeline is some really interesting stuff that is really waking people up to a lot of you know the the scumbaggery that's that's been going on and you know the way corporations you know fuck people over for profits, destroy, destroy the environment. Um, you know, these Native Americans, they've been letting dogs loose on them, pepper spraying them and all this stuff. It's like wounded knee all over again. So, you know, there's just like all this crazy stuff going on for humanity to really face these issues and ask themselves the question, do we do we really want to do things as, as humanity's always been doing it or would we, uh, would we prefer... Um, to do things maybe in, in a bit of a, a better way. Mm -hmm. And people have also, like, you're familiar with what Facebook check-ins are, right, Paul? Yes, I am. Yeah, to where, you know, you, you make a post and you select the check-in thing. And, you know, you could say, like, hey, uh, we just arrived here. <clears throat> well, what people have been doing... Um, because the uh, the police department in the local standing rock area the highly militarized police department um has allegedly been um you know using facebook check-ins in order to find out you know who's coming in to help the protesters and try to harass them on their way in you know to be able to identify them and such um on mass pe people have been doing fake check-ins in order to thwart this and um, so I've I've done a, a few fake check-ins, which um, have been have been pretty funny. There's an there's an article on it too. Here's why everyone on Facebook is checking into Standing Rock, North Dakota, and I shared that is you know a safe and legal way to have fun screwing with the totalitarian police state. No no laws broken. And um, there's a PSEC graphic that I did the fake che check in on that too. You know that meme that says you know I don't always drink beer. And you know there's that guy sitting at the table. Yeah, the most interesting man alive. Huh? The most interesting man alive. Yeah. So I did a I did a my own meme of that where it says, I don't always screw with Nazi fascists by checking into Standing Rock, North Dakota on Facebook, but when I do, it's because I stand with the Sioux Protectors. <clears throat> Yeah, so I guess we can just like totally close that out now. Because I think we are done with this hangout. All right. Well, it's really good talking to you, Dave. You as well. Yeah. We should have a very good night. You also. And um, I hope everybody out there in YouTube land also has a good night as well or day or whatever it is on their part of the planet. And peace out. I'm stopping the broadcast.